We're live. We're live. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Fiasco Friday. Fiasco Friday has been gone a little while, but it's back now. I'm Jordan. I'll be your host, uh, sort of, for the uh, evening. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um, uh, at the top of the show, we just want to make sure to thank Roll20. We're part of the Roll20 Roll20 Spotlight program. So uh, we are using the Roll20 um, module for Fiasco. If you don't have your own Roll20 account, what are you doing? Uh, it, it, you're stuck at home, so you got to play your, your RPGs somewhere. And if you're going to play them somewhere, go play them on Roll20. Um, uh, it's good. Uh, but tonight we're playing Fiasco, and we've got a bunch of a uh, bunch of awesome people ready to ready to play. So I do I I'm gonna get everyone to quickly introduce themselves. I, I guess we don't have our characters yet because that's part of the the um, the gameplay itself. But uh, we'll just quickly go around and everyone can say their names and and their handles uh, and uh, uh, whatever uh, brief thing you'd like to say. So uh, likewise for me. Oh, there you are. I'm Cole. I aka Ice Cold Brew on Twitter. I go by he, they. Mm -hmm. your next. Uh, I'm Jacinta, Farakaya Artwork or Farakaya on Twitter. Um, and I go by she, her. Yeah, and nice. Ryan, or Sphinx Roll on, on Twitch, Sphinx Roll on Twitter. And I'm Jordan at Made of Cartoons on Twitter, and you'll find me. Um, I guess I'm not at Made of Cartoons on Jess's Discord, but I'm Jordan. Uh, you'll find me. Um, all right. So I did give a quick rundown of the basics of the setup of this game um, before we started, but I'll quickly go over it again now for anyone who's watching and hasn't attended a uh, who hasn't attended a, a Fiasco Friday before. Um, Fiasco Fridays are, are built around these decks of cards. Uh, Fiasco is built around these decks of cards called play sets, and I've shuffled up the virtual uh, deck and dealt them all the cards out to our players uh, on Roll20. Um, and now we're going to take turns uh, playing them. They represent the different aspects of the story of our game. Um, they're kind of tailored to the theme, and, and the set that we decided to play on is Tales from Suburbia, which um, maybe sounds like a boring, um, a boring. Uh, Object at at first blush, especially when there's sci-fi and and horror options available. But Fiasco plays best when the setting is as mundane as you can get, because then when chaos breaks out, uh, it the contrast is excellent. So um, there are four types of cards in our hands: relationships, needs, uh, locations, and place uh, and objects. Uh, we're going to take turns placing those out and building up our story. So I'm going to go first. I'm going to look at my hand and. I, as I suggested while we were chatting, maybe picking our relationships first uh, is uh, is the um, is good. So then we have something to go on as we're placing the other cards out. Uh, it's important to note also that you do not have to place the cards in where they affect you. So you can put them anywhere on the board. Uh, so if you have a relationship, for example, Cole and Jacinta are side side by side, I could put a relationship card between them um, instead of putting establishing one of my own. Um, sometimes it's more fun to let other people choose who you're going to play. Uh, oh, I, these are good. I'm going to start, I'm going to start a relationship. I'm going to create a relationship between, I'm going to, I'm actually going to go with what I said. I'll put it between Cole and Jacinta and it's, it's relationship, uh, the past cross town sports rivals back in the day. Uh, whatever that means to you, is, is, that is now your that is now your relationship. Uh, I don't know. I don't know from sports. I don't know if you do, but uh, I didn't want that one on me. So, yeah. Uh, Cole, um, you go ahead and establish a card as well. Yeah, I think I'm also going to establish a relationship. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it, Jordan. I think you and I have a relationship in the community as a tax collector and oop, that's not how you make that bigger i can make it i you may not be able to um yeah but i think we are we have a relationship in the community we both work for the government either okay. we're tax collectors or we uh we can Citizen run like the animal shelter or animal control. okay uh excellent <laughs> <laughs> i can already see how things go south in this issue uh, all right, Jacinta, you want to pick one out? 
All right. Um, Jordan and Sphinx, I think you're distant relatives. Hmm. Excellent. <laughs> very distant, maybe. Uh, yeah, perfect. That's very open to... Uh... Oh, you know what that's making me think of? That's making me think of National Lampoon's uh, Christmas, um, where that, that weird brother of his shows up out of nowhere. Cross-eyed daughter. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm thinking of. I'm in the Christmas mood, obviously. Uh, and all right, Sphinx, uh, there's one relationship spot left. Um, you're not obligated to fill that up if the relationships you have in your hand aren't interesting, but uh, uh, it's your turn to play a card. Uh, oh, several establish a relationship between me and Jacinta. Okay. Uh, mini the sports. More sports. Okay. I guess with coaches, I maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I can see some uh, situations, uh, situations there. Um, perfect. All right. So it's back around to me. Now we're going to establish our uh, the rest of our cards. Um, I'm maybe out a need mm, that's it that seems like it would be yeah okay uh, i'm gonna put this one between me and cole put a little bigger here uh so one or one or both of us has a need to get respect um from um to get respect from themselves by standing up for themselves at last so one of us is one of us has no respect for ourselves, and we need to stand up uh, for what's important. Um, maybe I want those squirrels living in my roof, Cole. I don't know. Okay. Um, uh, I wouldn't. I don't judge your life. I just think you could do better. <laughs> but the, but they're my friends. Uh, all right. So I, now that I've established a need, there is an, a, a rule um, that needs have to be across from each other. They we can't be they can't be side by side. One person can't have two needs. Because if one person has two needs, then the person across from them has none. So there's no kind of influence onto their thing. So the other, if you can see me pinging the board here, the other need will have to be between snakes. And... So just keep that in mind uh, if you're playing a need. I think, uh, yeah. So Jacinta, I think, actually, I'm going to take this back. I think between Jordan and Ryan, y'all share the location of a. Uh, Promise Hill, an unfinished mansion on I mean, like it's so small I can't read it again. It's fine. I'll uh, yeah. I'll I'll embiggen it. Um on finished, Patriot Lane. On finished unfinished mansion on Patriot Lane. Perfect. This location is between me and Sphinx, but um uh, but it is it's sort of accessible to everybody as far as that goes. Um you're allowed to interact with all the bits and bobs on the on the board. All right, Jacinta, what would you like to do for your second card? <clears throat> I think I'm going to drop a need to get even between Sphinx and myself. The drama of it all. Mm. To get even with your old high school rival. Okay, well, it's all sort of coming together. <laughs> Lots of doesn't... rivals. <laughs> yeah. We're um, a very competitive group. This need doesn't necessarily need to apply to both people. Um, if it if a story shakes out that it makes more sense to only apply to one or the other, that's absolutely fair. The rules are very loose in this. This is really just guidelines to get us to a uh, a silly silly story. All right, um, Sphinx, you get the last uh, you get the last go. Uh, and I and technically it should be an object. It could be another location if you like. I have an object I wanted to play uh, Klingon on bet, but <laughs> on myself. A cling, <laughs> a Klingon Batleth. Okay, so <laughs> technically it go. I know, I know you want the Klingon Batleth uh, Sphinx. I can understand, but I'm gonna. It has to go over bes between Cole and and Jacinta. But okay, as j we'll just make sure you're the first person to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a wrench, so strange in the works that even like I've, even Fiasco can still surprise me to this day. I don't know why. Yeah, it's from this set too. I had Very... to look it up. Oh, yeah, it's a curved blade yeah. with the two handholds. Um, I will recall all the cards that are in your hands. You don't need them anymore. And 
there we go. So now we just take a little bit of time to figure out, you know, uh, you know pad out our relationships just a bit and come up with names. As I mentioned, um, if, if you need some ideas for names, you can grab them from, uh, from our uh, handout section, the journal section. There's one specifically for the Tales from Suburbia, but uh, the Poppleton Mall ones probably would be fine too. Um, I don't know about the Dragon Slayer's names, but there's nothing stopping you giving, your, giving yourself an elf name if that's really what you want. Um, so the, the fuzzy one for me is between me and you, Cole, because uh, mm -hmm. it says one of us is a citizen, so one of us is just a regular person, and then the other person is the government person that's bugging them, I guess. Um, I, I think I have an idea. I would okay. love to have a complaint, maybe about like, I would love to be complaining about maybe someone's neighborhood dog. Okay. So you you're the you're the fussy citizen, uh, yeah. and, and I'm going to be animal control that you're trying to convince to. Okay. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Cool with that. Huh. The tradition in this game is for all my characters to get steamrolled in the first couple of scenes, and then uh, not not necessarily killed, but just uh, have the worst ride of their lives the whole time. I bring it on myself. Uh, okay. I think that works for me. Um, I do have a an idea for a name right now. All right, if you got one, just uh, just shout it out. Yeah, I think the character I'm going to be playing is where did that first name go? Uh, Bishop Prophet. Prophet spelled P R O F I T. And I think like when he was part of like his old sports team, people said he would cash out. And that's what like was the big thing for him, right? Because it, based on his name, yeah. Okay, Bishop Prophet. Very interesting. I th I think I'm gonna go with um. Where was it? I'm gonna go with um. Doug Custard. It sounds, it sounds like a boring um, pencil pusher name. To me, <laughs> love it. I don't know why I capitalized Bishop Prophet, but it just seemed right. It, it felt right, right? Yeah, yeah, I didn't capitalize my name, but oh, Bishop Prophet is he him? Oh, I can put that in. For... Um. Any ideas for uh, the other relationships? Uh, Jacinta, what kind of sport were we both playing at the same time? Do you think? Cause... Well, <clears throat> the last time I played sports, uh, it ended badly. So <laughs> let's say uh, rugby. Rugby? For rugby. Cool. I oh, know yeah. nothing about rugby. I love it. Neither do I. It'll be great. I don't it's know like, anything about any sport. It's so. like football, but you get to just directly punch people in the face, is my mm -hmm. understanding. Yeah, right? it's okay. more violent than football. That's yeah. all. So you football but with hockey. Got it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what if football was hockey? That's that's rugby. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, Ryan, do you want to be? Is one of us going to be a, a a relative that shows up out of the blue that I haven't seen in a while? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're? How how are you seeing our distant rel, distant relations? This it unfinished is, mansion makes me think that one of us got an inheritance. You know what I mean? Could, it could be we both lived in the same neighborhood for a long time and just didn't know, and we just recently found out. Oh, one of us did uh, some kind of family tree, yeah. <laughs> like some did some family tree website thing, and then found out. Like we've uh, known each other for years, but just never knew. Oh wow! Okay, that's that's very dramatic. Yeah. Do we want to be just straight up neighbors that find out that they were related? Ooh. <laughs> okay, we've been talking over our fences for the whole time, and cool. Um. 
this mansion will figure out, I think, how it comes into play uh, as we're going. Do you have an idea for a name, uh, Sphinx? Uh, Clifton Clifton's, uh, Smith. Clifton Smith. Very dignified. Is that two Fs or one F? Uh, one. All right. I think Clifton Smith lives in the mansion, to be honest. <laughs> uh, all right. And uh, Jacinta, have you got a name? I think so. I think we're going to go with um, Blair Royal. E L A I R Royal, like royalty. Mm -hmm. uh, she, her. Um, and uh, I think that Clifton and I perhaps have children um, in a, a sports team and we're co-leaders or in the rugby, the kids rugby team, high school rugby team. Right. I'm a rugby mom. And living through, like like all good oh. sports parents do, living through their children and putting, uh, enforcing uh, way too high expectations on them. I made it to the college leagues. They're going all the way to yeah. whatever the NFL version of rugby is. They're going to be rugby, <laughs> rugby royalty. Um, what are uh, Clifton Smith's pronouns? Right? Uh, he, him. I don't know if you can hear my cat snoring, but it's very loud. Okay. <laughs> I can't, and I'm disappointed. Yeah. A little bit sad. It's cute, but it's also annoying. Uh, all right. Um, I think as everyone cool, we, we don't you don't want to invent too much because you want to leave a lot of room for while we're playing to invent things. Uh, but is everyone cool with what we've got now? Does anyone have any last questions for each other about details? I'm just really curious how the Klingon uh, how what do you call it again? Klingon what? Batleth. 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 Yeah. I'm really curious how that's going to come between us. Honestly, so I'm excited to see how that happens. Honestly, I, I'm so glad to see it. I, I have no, <laughs> I got no clue how it's going to factor in either. But I, I am glad that Ryan chose it because it's, it's the exact MacGuffin that we need. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, all right, I lost a window here. Cool. Uh, okay, so Fiasco, we'll, we'll jump right into it here, is played over two uh, acts. The first, um, each of those two acts consists of two scenes per player, and we're going to take turns, um, we're going we're to take turns establishing scenes. Your option on your turn is to just start a scene up. You just establish where and, and when. You drag people in if you want or invite people in, and you just start role-playing the scene. Alternatively, um, you can choose to have the other people at the table set up the scene for you. Ideally, maybe putting you into some kind of awkward situation where you have to do something you don't want to to get what you want. Um, the something to consider when deciding that on your turn is um, is that there are positive and negative outcome cards. You can see them on the on the right here, uh, red and blue, positive and and negative cards. Um, if you set up your own scene, if you just start role playing, then the other players at the table decide if it's a positive or negative outcome for that for you for that scene for your character specifically. Um, and so usually we'll come to a crossroads where a decision will like the character is making a decision, and then someone who is into the scene will choose to either have it be positive or negative outcome, and then you'll role play the rest of the scene out with how it goes. Um, Often it's you're asking a favor for somebody or you're attempting to do something. And if we decide it's going to end poorly for you, then you, you have to navigate that scene towards uh, a negative ending for your character. It can, it can be and often has a positive outcome for other people, but for you, it has to be negative. And then, and then the same goes for positive. If you let the other players set up the scenario for you, you get to choose the outcome in advance. So you don't know what the scene is going to be about, but you get to decide if it's positive or negative at the very beginning. Um, and that's where... When you choose positive, then you're going to be given. Uh, ideally, we give you something awful to do in order to make sure that the positive happens. Um, we do that uh, twice each, and then there'll be the break, uh, which where we'll take an actual break for from the show. And um, it's also when we will determine the tilt, which I will explain how it works. But it's based on the the, the outcome cards. Um, 
I'll deal them out to you as we get them. You just keep them face down near your name card for now. Um, in the second act, it's the same thing. We each do two scenes. Um, and then at the very end, we get a chance to shuffle our positive and negative outcome cards around if you want to give a, hand, a handful of hubris over to somebody else or, or whatever. Uh, you, you'll be able to do that. And then based on those cards, we'll find out what our outcome, our, our aftermath is. Um, there is some mechanics to it, but I don't bother telling anybody because it really doesn't matter. Um, and the aftermath, uh, the aftermath card is more of a, uh, the aftermath card is more of a guideline than it is uh, a rule. So yeah, uh, I am going to go first. I think I'll just start setting up a scene and, oh, and for, uh, for our players here, the, um, I mentioned it while we were getting set up there, but there is the kickers, um, Tales from Suburbia kickers, and those are to help you kick off a scene. So if you don't know what to do, you can go there and be inspired by one of the options, uh, options shown on there in the, um, the very bottom of the journal. All right. Uh, well, am I animal control? Do you want to? Yeah, I'm going to be animal, yeah. an animal control guy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, that happens to live in the neighborhood they also work in. Seems like a bad idea, but. Oh, I it's also great. Imagine... Once Bishop realizes that, he's going to come over every day to bother you about yeah. his animal yeah, I think problem. It's I think it's perfect for this hot mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, Ryan, do, I, do you and I already know? And is it awkward now, or, or, or do we want to find that out while we're playing? Because that's a good opening scene, but it's also interesting if we already know and now have to interact. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I would say it's probably been a little awkward after okay. initially finding out. Let's make it really awkward and say it's the day after. Uh, and did you, did you look it up? I looked it up. I de definitely looked it up. I'm, now I'm thinking about it. Doug Custard looked it up. I was gonna say, I feel like it'd be right because you probably look at like the ancestry in the town. Oh, I, yeah, I, I have access to government files. Yeah, <laughs> and just periodically, I look up everybody I know's name to make sure that I uh, to see mm -hmm. if I'm related to them. Yeah. Okay, it's just like everyone needs a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some people take care of plants. Some people look to see if they're related to their neighbors in some weird way. Yeah, it's totally normal behavior. Very normal. All right, so let's start with the classic uh, suburban scene. Uh, I'm out on my front lawn mowing it. I have a, I've got a, a ride-on mower that I'm riding around. And um, it's just high enough off the ground that I can see uh, whatever it is that Clifton's doing on the other side of the fence. Um, perhaps we're both mowing our lawns. I think that, that makes sense. And uh, I think... I don't. I, I'll let you decide, Ryan, how uh, enamored by this news uh, Clifton is. But I think that Doug is incredibly excited to find out that he has a third cousin in the neighborhood. <laughs> um, and so the lawnmower is going, which is loud. Um, everyone, if you didn't know, lawnmowers get loud. And uh, Doug is yell. I am yelling over the top of my lung lungs. Who knew, man? Wow! I, I, I think initially Clifton would just be like he tuned it out initially, and then like turn right. Oh, yeah, <laughs> he wasn't paying attention. This is definitely the twelfth or fifteenth time I've yelled that to try and get start a conversation over the lawnmowers. Uh and then when I realize I've startled you, I'll, I'll probably just drive the lawnmower over to the fence and then sort of stand up on it and lean over the fence towards you and try and get your attention while you're going around. You you probably actually notice you as he's coming around towards your direction with the lawnmower. Right. <laughs> you accidentally run. You didn't want to run into me, but you did. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> so are we going to do like Thanksgiving and Christmas together now? Like, I feel like, I feel like it'd be weird if we didn't, right? Uh, it's gonna be for well, another couple of months. Um, <laughs> well, it's just I'm just excited, you know. All my family, all my families, all my families on the east coast, and you know, I just I mean, I don't even know how I came across it. It's just like I act, I'm looking through paperwork and work, you know, and like there it is. Uh, I'm living next door to I'm living next door to blood, man. I didn't expect that. That's that's great. 
It's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't keep saying that. You've said that several times since I brought it up. I, I let you know. I I'm thrilled. I I guess it's I guess it is weird that we didn't notice the feel this kind of connection between us sooner. You know what I mean? You and I have such great talks, like when we're out mowing the lawn all the time. And I, I mean, I knew something was there. And it's because we share, I don't even know how a third cousin comes about. Uh, so I, I, that means our aunt's brother's kids. I, I mean, I don't even know. Wait. Did yeah. you figure out precisely how we're related, or just that we're related? I'm. I have a. I have a journal about it <laughs> that you have never seen. <laughs> I was gonna say I've got one of those like uh, um, obsessive kind of like red string board, but I think that's a little too much. I think uh, for now I would like Doug Custer's intentions to be weird, but but friendly. <laughs> yeah, I think for the last. Since we since you told me, I think Clifton's been on the phone with relatives trying to figure out what happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would love to meet more of our family. That's that's why we gotta do Christmas together. Yeah, they're pretty shocked. Um weird. <laughs> it's really weird. Uh <laughs> that we... Yeah. Well, you know, I hope it's a good kind of weird. I hope it's one of those good kinds of weird. Uh Cole, go ahead. Anytime you want to, just uh, flag. Oh man, I I I feel like Clifton's energy is just going to make this into a negative outcome because he just feels really weird about Doug coming up to him and. I can't imagine Doug feeling too good yeah. after this conversation. I agree. Uh, yeah. It's important to note with the um, and we'll be keeping count as we go with the positive and negative outcome cards. There's a limited number of each. There's only eight of each, and there's a total of sixteen scenes. So once all of them of one type are gone, all that's left are the others. So often there's a lot of positive things happening in the beginning, and then there is a ton of negative stuff that happens uh, as we burn out. Um, but... So we're starting off well, is what you're saying. Sure, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> that's so a good way of looking at it. Cole, you'd like to give me a negative outcome? Yeah, do I just click draw and pass it over to you? Uh, yeah, I grab one there, but uh, oh, sorry, there I, I jumped the gun. But I, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, that's how you do it. You just hover over top and one will pop up, reveal itself to you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, how do you think this what what would what would Clifton say to to upset me? To upset Doug. Because uh... he seems impervious to you calling it weird repeatedly. Uh I think it would be something like being reluctant to hang out. I, you know, I imagine Doug Custer to be as fragile as that. I, <laughs> where you're not even saying no, you're just dodging, and that upsets him. Uh, okay. What did he invite you to do? Okay, he's a taxidermist. I think that makes sense. That's weird. Um, and he says, what are your thoughts on possums? <laughs> I think I know the answer because I just had I feel I feel connected to you. Cliff. What are your thoughts on possums? And before you ask, they are not alive. These are dead possums. I think they're pests. Um what? I think they're pests. They just dig up the yard. Dead ones. I could probably do without. I don't know. So, so if I, if a friend of yours, I mean a, a newfound uh, relative of yours, wanted you to come over to see the new stuffed possums they have in their basement, uh, you would say. I feel kind of weird. <laughs> He used to shoot possums back home. Um, These ones still have the bullet holes in them. Funny that it's funny you mention that. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. So that... maybe 
You want to come over? <laughs> None entirely sure. I'm real busy this week. Put a we'll put a pin. I mean, they're they're not going anywhere. I uh, I guess. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll put a pin on on that one, Cliff. Uh, yeah, I, I get back to you. I, you know, I'll see when I can swing by, I guess. You know what? I'm going to be taking some photos. I'll send, I'll put one in your mailbox. You can decide based on that. Cool. <laughs> and he just, like, backs away from the lawnmower a bit. <laughs> turns the, turns the, the uh, lawnmower on and just drives slowly away. Yeah, Okay. That's about, I think that's the scene. Uh, so there you go. Fiasco, everybody. First scene. Uh, yeah. uh, that was perfect. Oh, boy. <laughs> Great start, guys. Great start. Ryan, you're cool. You're just saying cool. After I say I'm going to drop a Polaroid of a dead boss. Up the yeah, already, already the highlight of the game. All right. Uh, cool. Yeah. I Robert think... Himself. Oh man, I think uh, this is like the next day. I'm going to establish a scene. I want to go and talk to Doug. I have called you multiple times over the phone. I have called you at your office, and now I'm just taking it to you personally. And I have yet to see animal control come out to the neighborhood, and that's just really driving down our property values. And I really need to hone that in with you. Uh, and I imagine this is like right outside your house you have just pulled up from work i'm really imagining bishop outside of being an a uh, a young sports star he is also a member of the hoa uh, what, what is the hoa the homeowners association so oh, basically okay. their whole yeah right. oh right. yeah um he if you have ever seen hades town like the musical if you know the guy that plays hades patrick page this is his young, uh, younger self. So he's got like short cut black hair, clean shaven face. Okay. And he's got like a very like booming voice and very imposing. And as soon as you pull out the card, he goes, ah, Doug, Doug. Hey, buddy. Hey. So hey, you're champ. standing in my, in my driveway here? Is yeah. Like I've come, I, okay. I happen to be outside. I just timed it right when you pulled up your car. Ah, Mr. Prophet. Um, hey, how, how are you doing, Doug? How did how you, you doing, um, how did you, why are you here? Well, Doug, you see, uh, I know we've talked over the phone. We've sent some emails back and forth. And I, you, you know the, the, the possum problem I called you about? How they've been getting through the trash and making a lot of noise at night and causing all the dogs to bark. Well, I gave a little conference to the other people in the HOA. And they agree with me. These possums are imposing on the neighborhood. And we just really want to step up that timeline of, you know, so step Doug, up that time. While you're talking, rambling, Doug is grabbing like a, a bunch of stacks of files and stuff in the back of his car. And he's just like trying to get to his door as like quickly as he can. And I, and I say, yes, yes, possums. I seem to remember being top of at least one of your dozens of emails uh so mm -hmm. um you know along the, with the playground getting that cleaned up along with making sure kids aren't there after dark it's very important we don't have the kids there after it dark it would dark. be really terrible for the kids to play in the playground you're right mr prophet i mm -hmm. uh look you know we have a we have um we have a saying that's on a picture a poster of a of a cat at our office and it says trust the system you know, my husband tells me that all the time. Trust the system. Trust the system. Exactly. Your husband and is a wise man. Um, he is. Is, is he a government employee by chance? He is not, actually. Okay. He, he has been busy for a little bit. But that's, that's why I'm trusting the system. I am trusting you, Doug. I am trusting you, Mr. Custard. Well, I, I, I am just a cog, a happy cog in the system. You're, you are not a cog. No, I'm fine being a cog. Your your request has 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 been input and put in to the system. You understand? Mm -hmm. And the system takes time, Mr. Prophet. Um, and, and I just I just I just need you to remember that cat hanging from that branch and that words underneath says trust the trust the system. 
it's really a classic poster. I'm surprised you've never you've never really heard of it. Um, I've seen different words under that poster. I don't know. I, Some of my employees told me about it. I didn't really I didn't really care about can it. Can I be really honest with you, uh, Mr. Prophet? Of course, Mr. Custard. That's what I, I'm here for. Uh, I, I recently realized that I have a family member that I didn't know I had before. Congratulations. That's always good to hear about family. Yeah, and it's really thrown my life into, like, it's really made me think about just what I'm doing. And this doesn't have any effect on the system. I'm just, maybe if I'm not getting back to your emails as quickly as possible, it's just I've got this amazing new personal uh, issue that's come up. Mm-hmm. I, I understand. I understand. So, and well, sorry like for not answering the past 30 emails. Well, that's okay. I can understand. But, you know, there's another thing my husband and I have talked about, and that's keeping our personal life and our work life separate. And right now, it seems like your work life is going into your personal life. Yeah, but this is life changing, you know? Yeah. You know, that is. That is. Are they, do they live in the neighborhood? I don't want I don't think that it's right. I've already said too much. Yeah, about. yeah, you know what? You're right, you're right. It, yeah. You've said too much. Congratulations on finding the new family. I am so, so happy for you. I need to focus on, I, I, now I see what you're saying. Uh, I need to focus on the possums. The possums are very, very important. Your it, possums. Not just, not just my possums, the neighborhood's possums. We are a community and we are supposed to work through this together. And it's part of my job in the community to make sure the right authorities know. Um, uh, Jacinta and Ryan, do you have an idea of what, what outcome you mm -hmm. would like for Cole here, either positive or negative, or sorry, Bishop? So when do we pull in the needs and such? Uh, well, I mean, uh, we can incorporate them in anytime we want. Um, mm -hmm. I actually, I forgot that there's a need to stand up for our, someone, one of us at least needs to be stand, trying to stand up for ourselves. Um, I have feelings about which one that should be. Okay, well, you make a suggestion <laughs> for sure. Well, I mean, Doug just got this really big news and now he's being harassed by Bishop um, to mm -hmm. go and do this thing when you clearly have some you know, very personal stuff to go through. And he's just like accosting you at home after work. That's not cool. Hmm. And your newfound family is kind of ignoring you, which is also super not cool. And I think it would be good, Doug, if you stood up for yourself. I think it's time. Okay. Well, it's the beginning of this, which is, right? So that would give me a negative. good for you and bad for him. So yeah. I don't yes. know. <laughs> yeah, well, it's about, it's about the person's turn. So it, it is Cole's turn. So for Cole's character, it has to be the outcome. The outcome has to be for them. So... You're suggesting a negative outcome here. Okay. I love this. You can I go will. ahead. You go ahead and snag that. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. How do you push my buttons a little bit at the end of this uh, to get me upset at you? I guess is where we're at. It, it, you know how I said you have to keep your personal pri uh, personal life and work life separate. You gave me this news while I am accosting you in your personal life about stuff that's related to work. Right. It, that is act actively the worst kind of person to be. <laughs> and I think he just kind of hones in on that a little bit more. Exactly. The possums are so, so important. That's why I came to you here, you know, talk to, and talk to you about it face to face. This way is, we're not just looking at screens. And, is uh, Bishop the kind of person that would grab onto the door frame as it was trying to be closed or stick a foot in? Oh, gosh. Yeah. He's like that. I, I don't like, want to. I don't want to enforce that kind of bullying uh, characteristic on you if you don't want it. But uh, I'm trying to imagine the scene here. I definitely like after a minute. I do kind of see Bishop as like the over the very over imposing character who's just like um, he's the '90s villain of every like social commentary movie. Right. He's when uh, he was a teenager, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So right. he's just like got the door frame. He's like holding on to it. And he's like, so you're going to look into that for me, right? You're going to get right on it? Was it that you just said about keeping personal and business? Do you do know what time it is? Uh, it's five o'clock. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I'm off the clock, uh, Mr. Mr. Prophet. And so you're, uh, you're um, dipping the chocolate into the peanut butter at the wrong time. 
Okay. I, Mr. Custard, I see your point. I feel this is important, but you're right. I am a hypocrite of my own words. I should, uh... Possums aren't going anywhere, Cole. I'll get to it soon. Possums aren't going anywhere, Bishop? Whatever your name is. <laughs> I'm, I'm off the clock. I, <laughs> I'm not being Cole, to Bishop, name whatever your name is. Yeah. <laughs> At the door? Yeah. <laughs> And then I just like grab onto the handle on the door and it just Yeah, you just like the papers. Just slam the door like you kick the door right in my face. I would yeah. love to see that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Glad you're into it. Thank uh, you. All right. That seems like a good ending to our scene. Mm -hmm. All righty. Uh this Blair Roy Royale. Is it Royale or Royal? Oh, it's Royale, of course. Blair Royale, excellent. Mm. Uh, so I go for a nightly run at six o'clock. Mm. I go for a run every night at six o'clock, and I suspect the bishop's getting home from his excellent conversation with Doug. Exactly yeah, you see. Exactly as I'm running by his house. Uh, the house, of course, is very well manicured. It is all up to code. Everything's perfectly like <laughs> the lawn looks absolutely lovely. There's a lovely row of flowers and uh, some very well placed rocks. And nothing about it is like can be utilized at all. There are no fruits. There are no like actual good smelling plants. It's just all for show. Um, I'll do that thing that some people do, where you just you keep running in place when you're running past someone's house that you want to say hi to, because you don't want to keep like let your blood your um blood pressure drop or whatever. And she like runs in place. Oh, hello, Bishop, darling. How are you? You straight up see Bishop go. Uh, with his back turned to you, go, uh, Miss Blair, how are you? I am doing absolutely wonderful. It's so good to see you. It, oh, darling, you know it's Mrs. Miss Come now, we use the right terms here in town. You're part of the HOA. You should know better than that. Well, I thought between old school, friend, old school rivals, we should at least be on a first name basis. We were both good buddies with each other back in the day, back on the field, back <laughs> playing course, sevens and fifteens. Oh, of course. Do you remember that kick I made at the halfway line? <laughs> oh, wonderful. Oh, yeah, we definitely... We that possum problem yet. Oh, I actually was having just a wonderful conversation with Mr. Custard about it. And he, he assured me that it is being worked on. Everything is going absolutely swimmingly at the office, and they will get to work on it as soon as possible. You know, I'll invite Dougie over for dinner next week, and we can talk all about it. He's a very good friend of the family, you know. I would not be surprised. That would, that sounds about right. You are someone who has a lot of friends, and a lot, a lot, of, you keep the appearances up very well. Well, of course. I mean, after my championship wins in college, of course, one has to keep a certain level of uh, professionalism. <laughs> Do you mean the championship? That y'all got found out for cheating? Uh, that one little scandal the coach had going on? That wasn't made official, dear. That was just rumors and locker room chatter and gossip and such, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I still have the medals. It's fine. It's hanging in my living room. Of course, of course. The medal, it, I, it, I believe it rightfully belongs to the winner of that championship. Yes. Yes, it does. Speaking oh. of the winner, congratulations on being uh, named the head of the HOA this year. Of course. I can't imagine someone better to be a nitpicking, details-oriented pest in the neighborhood. By the way, is your grass an inch and a half or an inch? Oh, I think you're getting a little long there, dear. I can assure you it is exactly one inch. The, everything has been perfectly manicured. My husband, Louise, has helped me take care of it. We have worked together to form this perfectly good lawn. And while it's not right for the head of the HOA to win Yard of the Month, we were told that we were very close to winning this year. How about your lawn? Oh, yes. How about your lawn? I see those hedges are getting a little bit out of shape. They aren't actually <laughs> no, shaping you. up. So I think this is uh, an appropriate time to say that Ryan, Ryan and I have decided that this is ending positively for Blair. Uh, so I'll hand a positive card to Blair. We just want to further this terrible ruin... person even worse. Yeah, we want to make Bishop's <laughs> Day even worse. Yeah. 
All right. So, uh, you, however it goes, it steers toward positive for Claire. <laughs> yes, you did see the request come in and approved. I appreciate it to grow out our hedges to create new shaped topiaries to win the lawn of the month again. Of course. I think that's six months in a row, including winter. <laughs> Who knew? Of Who course. knew Christmas lights could be such a delight? The the way you can shape and you can see uh, you can see Bishop gritting his teeth as he's saying this. The way you can form such wonderful shapes out of the bushes into lovely statues and remakes of your wins over the years, <laughs> absolutely wonderful. And the decoration with the white flowers showing like a medal. On your last month's pro uh, last month's yard, absolutely lovely, absolutely oh, lovely. It. I'm glad you recognize it. I'm sure you saw it enough in the school newspapers, anyway. In the background but... of the scene behind you, over <laughs> over Blair's shoulder, you see like during this whole conversation, several people stopping to take pictures <laughs> with with Blair's lawn, mm -hmm. just like selfies with the lawn. It's just to rub uh... it in over and over again. You see, uh... Oh gosh, you know, my pulse is starting to drop. Um, anyway, <laughs> thank you for the approval and um, you get on with the trimming of your grass, won't you? It's so unseemly. Of course. <laughs> Hope you have a wonderful evening. You and... too, Bishop. <laughs> and tell your spouse I said hello. Oh, you know, Charles, <laughs> we'll be sure to invite you two over for dinner or lunch, perhaps. Um, Doug is obviously engaged next. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Doodles. Doodles. He spins on his heel and just starts walking away as, like, not trying to be as quick as possible, but definitely quicker than he should. <laughs> and you can just see, like, the fist clenched up and, like, if you zoom in on the camera, you see his knuckles turning white as he puts the key in and twists the twists them in just a little bit too harsh. <laughs> oh, Blair is definitely in like a matching Lululemon from top to bottom with like mm -hmm. the headband and the Apple phone on the shoulder and the Apple mm -hmm. Watch with her pulse and just like full kit. Just full kit. Like it, AirPods in oh. one popped out, of course, because you have to you know talk. You to have people. to be polite, like. It would be rude to speak with two uh, in. I love this scene so much. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. I just think you're too good at this role. I'm nervous. <laughs> All right. Um, now we're on to Ryan. What what uh, kind of scene are you going to do there? Um, I... Uh, I was thinking either before or after like the Little League game. I'm not sure which right now. Maybe, maybe just finishing up. Like a rugby little league. Yeah. <laughs> when we're serving the oranges and like the cheese squares mm -hmm. that I meticulously cut into cubes. <laughs> who wants a Capri Sun? <laughs> Too much sugar. Never give them. We would never give them Capri Sun. Bags of Fresh juice. pressed. Who knew? Every <laughs> time. <laughs> so that kid's on the same team. I think so. Yeah. Co-coaches co or something. What's y'all's team name? Y'all have one? Ooh. I, how do y'all feel about the uh, either Blue Jays or Roadrunners? I like Roadrunners, personally. I'm yeah. from Toronto originally, so like I have feelings about Blue Jays. <laughs> so it's the small town Roadrunners? Is that what, uh... Heck yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think you just... <laughs> hey, how you doing? Uh... <laughs> oh, Clifton, darling. Wonderful to see you. Your boy's doing so well out there on the field. Yeah, he's putting in work. You no, know, every day we getting in doing drills. You should join us. William and I uh, go out for runs every day. Make sure to get a couple laps around the neighborhood. By the way, I saw you and Doug chatting the other day. Everything all right. It looks a little tense. Yeah, we just, we just found out a bit of news, a bit of interesting news. Oh, goodness me. 
I hope nothing bad. I mean, this is a good neighborhood. We'll see. <laughs> Goodness. Well, we're having him over for dinner next week. Perhaps I'll have to pick his brain a little. Is there anything you'd like me to talk to him about? No one, Doug. I don't think you'll get a straight answer. <laughs> oh, he's a complicated man, isn't he? Very. Well, uh, what are we, two games? And she pulls out a clipboard <laughs> with a pen <laughs> where she has done some complicated math on how our children are going to win the tournament. I think we're about two wins and one tie away from us uh, succeed. I mean, <clears throat> of course, the children, the children succeeding, children succeeding in this championship this year. Very excited to do the pizza party, but I'm thinking, you know, we should probably go to that new place down in the city center. They uh, manage all sorts of dietary restrictions and locally owned. What do you think? It's only if they win. When they win, darling. When they win. I, I imagine there's like a, uh, a one of the little kids comes over over here and says, "I want to go to Chuck E. Cheese." Oh, I want to go to Charles Cheddar. <laughs> no, darling. You know those are full of grease and just modified things, and it's awful. It's awful. You know, we'll go to that place downtown in the city center. It's brand new, brand new. And all sorts of delicious things. But you'll love all of them. Here, have an orange. The kid takes the orange and it's just like, I want to go to Charles Cheddar and play in the ball pit. And it's just like sadly munching away. Another kid says, I don't want to eat anymore. <laughs> Kale. Kale is good for you. Do you want to be big and strong and a college rugby champion? You do. So eat your kale. Kale. Powers rugby, I know. Good question. This little league team, how old are they? Are they like six to ten? Like, they're, I feel like they're too young to be playing. They are oh, te young teenagers, maybe. Sure. Yeah. Like, like thirteen to fifteen age range, sure. just old enough Early that I can school. like start the actual training. <laughs> Put that yeah. expectation really high. Yeah, I, <laughs> I still feel like my character is accurate because. Up until 18, I still want to go to Chuck E. Cheese, so it works out. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> All the cool kids went to Chuck E. Cheese. Sorry, Charles Cheddar. Charles Cheddar. Charles Edward Cheddars, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Paul, do we think this is going to go good or bad for Ryan? Oh, God. I think it's going to go good for Ryan. Yeah, uh, sorry. I'm calling and, everyone by there. Right? But yeah, for Cliff, my... Good pal and basically brother Cliff. I uh, <laughs> think we're going to get a positive outcome, so I'll give one to you there, Ryan. Uh, all right, so uh, na navigate your scene towards a, hap a good ending for Clifton. Now, Clifton, like I, I mentioned, the um, dog is coming over for dinner next week. Are you sure you don't want to join? You might be able to air whatever it is that ails you, and Charles and I can help mediate. Perhaps keep things at a respectable level, you know? Uh, I think our past, we still, me and the boy still got to put in a bit of work during that time. So we can't oh. have him dropping the ball like some <laughs> have. Um, Is that, that a, a subtle dig from Cliff against a... <laughs> it, it barely oh. snuck in there. I like it. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> she walks away with her tray of oranges. <laughs> Immediately mad. I like it. <laughs> All right. Uh, that sounds like the scene. Mm -hmm. um, OK, so it's back around to me. I'd like to try and tie in this unfinished mansion but I'm not sure. Maybe mm -hmm. someone is building it across the street from us. Like someone's moving in and they tore down whatever house was there and they're building a McMansion in the place. It was definitely like someone's childhood home. <laughs> and it's like a, it was like one of those one stories with like the stone patios, the stone yeah. staircase you step up. 
Yeah, it was a, actually a really nice house, and now it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, and this gives us a, a in, in case we get tired of being mean to each other, we could be mean to this, the fictional person who lives in this house or is mm -hmm. going to. So um, maybe um, but I, we'll come back to that, I think. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give Cole I'm going to throw Cole a, a bishop a bone and go around his house to look at the uh, situation with the animals. I think. I was actually just thinking, what if prompt the unfinished mansion is actually three torn down houses, and that person's oh. building a mansion on that? Oh no! If we want to use that later. Okay. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come, come back around to it. All right. I'm. I am. Uh, I've just walked up your driveway. You have eagerly met me, and you are. Um, you're going to show me the. Uh, the damage, the damage, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm here, Mr. Prophet, during work hours. Hey, Mr. Custard, thank you again for taking time out of your work day to come and see me. Uh, do you want any tea, anything to drink? I want this water? to go as quickly as possible. That's what I want. Okay, so just like, let's just show me what, right. the, what, what terrible things these possums have apparently, what, what affronts they have subjected you to, these poor creatures of the night. All right. All right. Go ahead. Let's go ahead. Follow me real quick. And um, he like walks up to his fence and he like punches in a code. It's one of those electronic fences and that pops open. And oh, an offense? Is that a thing? I, yeah, I delivered to rich neighborhoods from time to time and they definitely have that. <laughs> I, know the, I know the secret code to getting past that fence. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just jump over it. Exactly. Um, uh, right. But you walked back and you see just, like, a couple scratches on the wall. You see a little bit of, like, random trash and compost. You have a comp There's a compost bin. has green beans and such back there. And what you see is, like, one of the boards of the compost has been, like, ripped off. And the compost is, like, spilling over into the, gra the nice stone pathway onto the grass. And then he, like, walks up and says, Hey, see here? And he points at the power box. You see right there, they're starting to chew through the, the 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 covering on that. They're trying to get into into my water to try to take away all my energy. Uh, there's also like a sports drink. He like picks it up and starts like he does the typical shot you always see with the sports drink where he pops a cap and then just shoots it straight into his mouth from like right with the three logo feet away. Out. Yeah. Uh yeah, you see? You're concerned it's that the possums are going to try and charge their phones on your at your house? I'm concerned they're going to eat through the wires. They're going to cut electricity into my house. And they're going to just completely, they're just going to completely shut off all power. They could do this to, they could do this to next door. They could do it to Mr. Smith. Smith. They could do it to, uh, they could do it to, and you see him pause at this. They could do it to the Royals. Royals, as she likes to say. But, uh, my concern is with these possums, we don't get them taken care of quickly, we're going to have a power outage in the neighborhood, starting with my house. But it could spread, and then this infestation keep going. Uh, there's like a look on Doug's face of real disappointment that there hasn't actually possums around. Uh, I, I don't know if you would interpret it that way, but he's, he's sort of been phase, like fading in and out. Um, I, think, I think Bishop is like, up his own, uh, up in his own air, so right. much that he thinks like, yeah, this is how I feel. I feel hurt that this is going to happen to our community, and we need to do something about this, Doug. We yeah. need to come together for a solution. Yeah, yeah, your power and stuff, and I like idly write things down on on a note on a note. Mm -hmm. uh, now, my motion sensor up there shows me that there have been at least three pretty big possums. They're at least I think they're pretty big. Something was like a little bit bigger. But it's definitely like, if you look at these claw marks, they've definitely, and bite marks, they've definitely just been chewing through the wires. You have like video footage of them. How do you know it's not the neighborhood cat? Like, look at those claws. Like you think a cat could do that? Uh, big one, maybe. Uh, listen. Like a bobcat? Possums. 
possums are more clever than you think. They, they're more clever than people give them credit for. They're just a pest. How could they? Uh, it's, mm, it's, just, it's just a common misconception uh, about them. Uh, you know, um, they no animal would survive this long amongst people without having some uh, level of intelligence. You know, so I think. Uh, Mr. Prophet, uh, where this whole process has us to begin is with you learning to have a little more respect for these creatures. I'll respect them if they respect my property. Well, you know, the possums were here first, Mr. Prophet. When I bought the house, no, they weren't. I made sure to check every nook and cranny, smash cut, up into the attic, you see like a little nest of bats. You cut down to below the basement, and there's just like a little hole going through. Bunch of cockroaches playing cards, <laughs> <laughs> all playing poker at once. Oh, I'm sure you've been very thorough, Mr. Prophet. But um, of course, as I mentioned, these are wily creatures. Yeah, it seems as though all they do is sleep and hang from trees all day. Mm -hmm. But what they are dreaming is what they're dreaming of. Is plans, Prophet. They're dreaming up plans to get what they want from us. I don't oh, know what I'm talking. I'm very tired today, and I'm now I'm realizing I don't know what I'm saying out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> they have plans. These possums, Mr. Prophet. So, so they're can't... planning a heist. I really I couldn't say one way or another. Um, <laughs> so what you're telling me is I have to outsmart the possums. I think at this point we should give you an outcome card. Yeah. I have no idea where this will go. Personally? Uh, <laughs> I think it'd be positive to where Bishop yeah. goes. Okay. Okay. How do you propose I do this? How, what, what should I start with? If you want to take a positive outcome, I think it's Bishop actually starts listening to you. Right. And actually like hears you out. Grab it. Ultimately, we need to make sure we want to catch them and relocate them somewhere where, um, you know, they're more appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, so what you need to do is find out what they like. Um, I suggest if you have the time, spend some time digging through uh, your compost and finding out, you know, which bits were nibbled on the most um, and okay. throw more of that out uh, to see. Well, okay. it's, it's a science. Possum well, catching is a science, Mr. Fish, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Prophet. I know one thing they don't like, and that's kale. No one likes kale. No, kale is... Kale's never done anything for anybody. That we can agree on. Exactly. Only that. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, spend some okay. time really dig. If have they left any spore samples around? Spore samples, um, they're poop, of course. I mean, that's a technical government. We, we, we use technical government term spore, but okay, I, yeah, the poop, yeah. Um, this morning, actually, I think they left some around the fence to the back. So right just, next to the if, red leaf. If you take some time to just pull it apart a bit, you'll find evidence of what they've eaten. All right. Um, I'm going to go get some gloves and uh, I'll Oh, no, get... no. Well, see, the thing is, is that gloves won't allow you to feel the texture. I have so... a pamphlet about how to do it. And I pull out a pamphlet that says uh, it, spore and how to, ex how to examine it. <laughs> and I hand it over. Uh... You see Bishop start fingering through it and go, There's look a around. There's gloves with a line through it. Mm -hmm. These are government pamphlets. Oh. I'm, just, I'm just saying. You know, I'm going to follow what you said. Trust the system. All right. I tap, I tap the poop pamphlet again, and I, and I, I nod my head, and I say, <laughs> trust, the, trust the system. Oh, no. <laughs> And I think that's going to be a scene where... That, that is yeah. more than enough of this nonsense, yes. <laughs> Bishop, cut to Bishop digging through poop. Yeah, pulling apart little, little, 
Go possum poop. Praying that Blair does not come across him digging through poop. Exactly. Every you'll see him every five minutes, just like checking over his shoulder, make sure the fences are closed. Oh <laughs> uh, boy, fiasco. All right. Yeah, actually, Ryan brings up a good question. Are these actually government pamphlets, or did Doug plan for this day? Uh, I, well, I think that remains, I think they maybe Wait. look a little photo, like home photocopied. Oh, I love it. Definitely picturing like back in the nineties, you'd use like paint to like draw squares and put mm -hmm. text on exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That is what I'm picturing. <laughs> it looks like it was made on an old Apple too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, up. Oh God. Hmm. I really want to figure out how this uh, object came in. I don't have an idea yet. Uh, can someone establish a scene for me? I have no ideas at the moment. And you would like it centered around the bat left? Uh, no. HOA I... association meeting? Actually, could we do a flashback? Sure, can we do a flashback to... Hey, Blair, how would you feel about doing a flashback to our, uh, we'll have like two separate flashbacks. One is our very first game against each other, and then one is our very last game against each other. Oh, absolutely. I am here for this. <laughs> um, all right. So, yeah. So I think how this works out, and um, we have, oh gosh, I have to think of two names real quick. Um, Unless, uh, Blair, do you have a team name that you want to go with? I think I'm going to call uh, my team the uh, Ro uh, Rockport Boulders. But we're the Titans. The Titans? Yeah. The Rockport oh. Boulders versus the Titans. Let's go. Mm -hmm. And how do you think this first game is going? I mean, for me, it's going great. <laughs> Mm -hmm. obviously <laughs> yeah yeah uh some good like okay i have a tab open with rugby rules same some here <laughs> halfway line action i don't know <laughs> mm -hmm. we're like real close neck and neck so ready to like one of us is gonna take the what i don't know i don't know rugby. Mm -hmm. whatever one of us is real close to getting that final touchdown yeah we're in the try zone right now it's neck and neck uh yeah. i'm gonna say it's about uh, I think it's five points. Yeah, we are. Your team is up by three. My team is up by uh, is down by. Yeah. So if we get this next try, we get to score and we'll beat you for the with like time ring out essentially. Yeah. And we're, you see, we're just trying to run down the clock. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. So you see the entire the uh, I think it's sevens. I think that's how they. Uh, I think they play with teams of seven. So. Basically, you see the lineup, and I think you and I are, like, squared off at the same position against each other. And my the one play I was told is just cash out. So I'm going to take the ball. I'm just going to charge right through the center. Um, and the entire time, we're just, like, talking back and forth going. Uh, and I think Bishop just goes, so how long have you been playing rugby? Right at the line, right before they uh, snap the ball. Since I was a girl. Since you Obviously. were a girl? I've been playing. My since father I... taught me. That when tracks. Yeah, of course. That's because it's not young. That's a good connection I have with your dad. My dad uh, didn't want me to play rugby. And I did this to prove him wrong, prove I was tougher. Well, you're tougher than him, perhaps, not tougher than me. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see, won't we? And I. How do. I don't want a uh, outcome card for this one. Actually, no. Give me an outcome card for this one. I would love to see how the how the play goes out. This is is this where Bishop botches and just. I I don't, I don't think Bishop botches, but I think he doesn't win. Like you know what I mean. A play can still be really good, but you still lose. Oh So yeah. like, it's just hair. Half a second before the game ends, you score right after the buzzer is called. And that's oh, why you're bitter. No, <laughs> no, this is, 
what if it's even worse? What if the play is great? Bishop is like pushing through the center. People are basically like smashing him down and you were just right there, right at the end of the line. And right when he sees the uh, end zone, you tackle him and he is just right on the line, right skirting the line. And then the, the, the ball gets turned over. Yep. Okay. That's what it is. You just Absolutely. tackle me to the ground. And yeah. Bishop is just angry and disappointed. There's a whole bunch of like good games and like people patting him on the back, but he's just livid. You can just see him and he's just, he walks away and goes, Next time. Remember what the therapist told you? Breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. And then we go to the will... championship game. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, Blair will absolutely come up to you after and say, like I said, your father might have been right. Or you're, you were, you're right against your father. But you're not tougher than me. Good game. And just walk off. <laughs> he looks at her and goes, she is not going to win the championship. I'm going to do. And, uh. So maybe, maybe Ryan and I can pick the outcome of the championship game. Yeah. And that, and that will determine what side the rivalry tilts towards, whether it's, whether it's, uh, Bishop, Bishop beat Blair once and she will never let herself live it down, or if it's the other way around. Mm-hmm. What, do you, what do you think, mm-hmm. Ryan? What? Did, did, did this? What if, what if yeah, Bishop the, won, but yeah. Blair wasn't part of the game? Like, maybe an injury took her out of the game. Oh, yeah, okay. And it would never able to like, really settle mm-hmm. things between them. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Mm-hmm. So let's give let's give Bishop a much deserved positive outcome here. A one win. One Complicated win. positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And it's one of like the most impressive tries uh that have been in for high school sports where you just see Bishop uh get the ball. And they just basically sprint 50 yards. No one can catch them. And it's like actively impressive. And that's how they win. But it feels like it's such an empty victory at the same time. Because they're like, I didn't get to beat that. I didn't get to beat that one player. Royal, whatever her name was. Uh, God. And, you know, still they still get like the uh, championship trophy. He gets his photo taken. Um the one article in the newspaper writing about him, and that's actually hanging up in the uh, hallway to the entrance of his home. But he still just doesn't feel good about it. I think that's going to cut my scene there. All right. It's positive, but you're still upset that you didn't get to beat Blair. Yeah. Okay. A good little flashback there. Uh, Blair, you're up. Um, so now that we're, I, I kind of want to visit the HOA, um, now that Bishop has won the head of the HOA, but Blair has won the yard contests over and over and over again. That's something Um, that uh, feasibly we could all be there for, too. Yeah, oh, absolutely. <laughs> Everybody is here, perhaps to discuss the house that is currently under construction um, mm. and making all sorts of rackets before 7 a.m. <laughs> and I, as the I, head of the HOA, Bishop, you should be able to control these things. Of course, and we've actually sent plenty of notice letters. We have been informed by the contractors that the owner of the home wants the work done quickly, promptly, and ever so uh, competently. Their words, yes. not mine. Yes, but you see, I mean, if you can visit Mr. Custard here in person after hours to deal with such a thing, you can't act on a, your role and visit in person at the site or perhaps visit the owners of the house. That seems like you're shirking your duty, Mr. Prophet. Oh, Miss, well, Mrs. Royal. Thank you. You're very welcome. You see, I've been trying to get in touch with the owner for the past three weeks. Every day. I tried going in at 8 a.m. I tried going in at 12 p.m. They always seem to be mysteriously out of town while their home is being worked on. I even asked uh, whoever is supervising the site, hey, do you happen to have a uh, phone number I can contact them? 
Phone number always goes to voicemail, no returns. I have followed every process. I have followed every step that I am allowed to do legally. I'm imagining mm. the scenes from Parks and Recreation when they're trying to get, uh, like they're talking to, uh, you know, the, yeah. the, the community about something. And someone stands up, some old woman, and she says, I'm suspicious the people in those three houses, they all died within a month of each other. Don't you think it's strange that all of that land became available at the, s the same time? Are you going to investigate that? I, I had friends in those houses, and now they're gone. But Mrs. Bubble Snap, I understand your concern. And while we the the loss of life was very tragic and very sudden, I've also been informed by our wonderful uh, community members in the police that it is in the politest sense not under our jurisdiction. Mm. As the head of the HOA, I think you own a lot of things that you're not really taking advantage of, Mr. Prophet. Now, my house is going to be photographed for Holmes Weekly as the cover photo. Pause for applause. Yes, we all and love I... Holmes Weekly. Yes. This is the third time. Yes, Sorry. of course. Fourth. Anyway. Um, and quite frankly, it's unseemly that such a racket is going on. If they're going to do it quickly, let's do it quickly. If they're going to do it well, let's do it well. But let's pick one, can't we? Miss Royal, I understand the concerns and the noise complaints. Might I also add that with the loss of three homes, our value has actually this has actually made us avoid a increase in taxes for the entire community, which seems to me has, helps out some of our neighbors. And while we all love looking at your home, we also all want to continue to build ourselves together as community. And we are all meant to work together to find solutions. Now, I have gone through all my solutions. I have asked other HOA members what else I could do. I have even asked our wonderful members who work in the government what to do about this home. Miss Blair, Miss Mrs. Royal, I apologize again. If you have any recommendations, I would love to hear them because to me, it sounds like you are giving me a lot of problems and not a lot of solutions. Oh, dare you. <laughs> I gave Blair a negative card, but I feel like she's getting the talking to that's related to it already. So, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I just had that vibe, negatives coming up. I'm like, let's go ahead and hone in on yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I dare say I have not been spoken to like that in forever. I'm going to get to the bottom of this That's myself. a scandal at the college championship, if I remember correctly. But yes, go on. Oh, she storms out. <laughs> I'm going to take care of this myself. I think and... I'm sitting off to the side, like, to talk next about some something. And you two start bickering uh, about college and high school nonsense. And I probably just get up and just carefully push, <laughs> push Bishop away from the mic. Um, and then be like, so squirrels, <laughs> and that's maybe where this yeah. would actually end. <laughs> yeah. Get them off my lawn. <laughs> the squirrels I have, have started. I have squirrel pamphlets. Uh, <laughs> the squirrels have started going after the birds. Oh God! It is our job to make a treaty between the two. It's fun to watch, but it's not appropriate. Uh. <laughs> All right, Blair got her first ever talking to her mortal enemy. Oh, I love it. <laughs> All right, uh, Ryan, you have the uh, auspicious uh, uh, um, gift of having the last scene of the first act. There's no real pressure here, but you can set up a cliffhanger or, or uh, put a big spin, and we don't get to react to it until after the break. So mm -hmm. what, what would you like to do... Uh, Tell us about your, ter your your scene or what have you. 
Probably another, another scene with Doug, but this time with Cliff's son there. <laughs> right. Which would make him my nephew. Fourth no. cousin? <laughs> fourth cousin? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Is it fourth cousin? I think. It, like, if your cousin has a kid, that kid's still your cousin, and that's just like a further cousin. That kid is or... your second cousin, I think. Yeah. yeah. So if your cousin so have if, a kid, that kid is your second cousin. If Cliff is yeah. my third cousin, then that means the kid is my fourth cousin, I guess. Yeah, that sounds Which, right. At a certain point, becomes irrelevant. Uh, <laughs> but sure. <laughs> um, are are we on your lawn, or what's the uh, where, where are we? Um, uh, it could be like on their way out, and you just catch them like as the Loading into the car. Oh sure, lots of awkward getting in and out of car scenes, <laughs> uh, which I which I appreciate. Uh, yeah, I'm loading a, a, a box of cases or something, uh, cases, uh, work cases into my trunk, and I see the two of you come out. Um, hey, it's my favorite third cousin. You can see his shoulders slump a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's terrible. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm sad too. We're not gonna have a lot of time to talk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're just on our way out. How you been? You know, uh life is pretty good. Uh I I feel like I I handled some work stuff really well recently. And you know, I, and then now I've got you in my life. I it's just things are looking up for old Dougie. Is this is this uh, well, I guess I would have met your son at some, uh, your kid at some point. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do the, uh, wow, you're like so much bigger now. You're growing like a weed, kid. <laughs> was just saw him yesterday, right? <laughs> out, of, out of your shot. Oh, they, I put kid. a hand on your shoulder, on, on Clifton's <laughs> shoulder, and I'm like, they grow so fast. Yeah. Eat me out of house and home. <laughs> uh, I probably would start looking for something in my pocket and be, how old is your kid, do you figure? Uh, probably 13, I'd say. Okay. You want to see something really cool? He shrugs. <laughs> I start reaching into my, into my jacket pocket and I say, have you ever seen the inside of a pigeon? The kid. Um, <laughs> you, r- quick question, Ryan. Do you want one of either me or Jacinta to come in playing the kid and reacting? Yeah, that'll be that'll be good. Yeah. I don't know if this is a good time for a good or bad outcome, you two, but it's oh god. There's definitely a picture of the inside of a pigeon coming out of his pocket soon. Jacinta, do you want to play the kid or do you want me to play? I'll, I'll let whoever I will happily play a child can, can decide. <laughs> um, God, you said 13 years old. <laughs> uh dad what is this man doing negative oh, outcome like... i'm not sure son <laughs> i'm just not sure are we really related to that guy oh my... okay, this so... is worse than when grandma took me to the carnival and wouldn't let me go on the rides so a negative outcome this is a negative outcome for for cliff right yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, positive outcome. For I'm positive. sorry. Okay. No, no. I yeah. it could go either way. I, I was hoping a little bit that I might make a best friend of this kid, which would be terrible no. for Cliff. You're right. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, no, no, no. Oh, my God. That's the yeah. coolest thing for I've Cliff. ever seen in my life. <laughs> do you do that for like fun? Yeah. Can you show and, me more of that? And and yeah. I bet you're I bet you're <laughs> I bet you're wondering oh. where all the organs mm. are. Yeah. More photos. They're yeah, right here. Go. Oh my God. <laughs> you have like ignoring, an album? Just, just ignoring Cliff. <laughs> Dad, can we just skip rugby and like, can you show me this stuff? This is really cool. And <laughs> no, <I'm> Doug, <laughs> Doug starts reaching. You can see him starting to reach for a plastic baggie that's in another pocket. <laughs> oh. Doug, what you got there? Uh, well, I mean... It's the rest of the pigeon. I we have a we have a pickup at work that gets rid of these in a in a uh, you know san, sanitation comes around to pick them up. So oh, come on, man. What, is, <laughs> what do you do for your job, man? I want to do that. 
That looks cool. Well, you, you know, know boy. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know what? If once you're old enough, you know, there might be uh we're always looking at animal services we struggle to find people to do internships. I don't know why. Um it's you know, it's a it's a thrilling line of work. Uh Cliff, is it all right if I bring around some some reading materials for for your boy? Yeah, bring them to me first. Oh sure, Mary. yeah. Dad, yeah. you're so uncool. We have to look out for the young ones in our life. I totally agree. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he, yeah, you know, the boy might not be around. You know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um. And then I like hand the I just give the um, Polaroid right to your kid and say, yeah, I got a lot. I take like dozens of these, so this one's yours. I'll send a few more with the literature. You have like a pamphlet. <laughs> a single more tear goes pamphlet. down. A single tear goes down Doug's face. Um. Uh. Yeah, the I think the way the scene will end maybe is I clap Cliff on the shoulders and I say, "He takes after me," <laughs> which I have to imagine will be the absolute worst, uh, worst thing. As Cliff goes goes into the car with his son, oh boy, somebody's earned some extra laps. <laughs> kids taking their taking their parents taking things out on their sports kids, a classic. <laughs> oh my god oh wow oh so silly <laughs> all right um that brings us to that that ends the first act um so i think we'll take a, a little after 8 30 we'll take a, our first break uh we'll be about back in about 10 minutes um during the break we will uh we will figure out the uh, the tilt for all of yous, and then uh, we'll be back with the second half of this fiasco. Currently, we have each gotten one positive and one negative outcome, so, which is exciting uh, to me. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, so we'll see it. We'll see how it goes in the bottom half. So uh, uh, we'll see. We'll see y'all in about ten minutes uh, after a break. Thanks for watching so far. Yeah, thank you guys. Oh no, panic. <laughs> hey, everybody, we're back for uh, a second half of Fiasco Friday. Um, I, we're, we've, we've set up the dominoes, um, and now someone is going to uh, tip the first one over, I'm sure, kind of make sure all of our days are ruined. Um, during the break, we took, everyone flipped over their outcome cards, and there are some numbers in the top right, and we did a little bit of uh, Fiasco math and chose our um our two tilts so our first tilt uh tilt is a the tilts are, are wrenches in the works that we have to try and incorporate in the second um second act our first one is innocence somebody stumbles in at just the wrong moment whatever whatever that means and um our other one is mayhem magnificent self-destruction so by the time our second act is up uh, hopefully we will have fulfilled the prophecies that is these that are these two cards um i think uh i think with my first scene we'll just do the dinner party because i feel like that was set up in act one um <laughs> also one i think maybe we could all be at oh, okay yeah i have to i have to ask blair is bishop invited <laughs> oh absolutely because she wants to show off like nobody's business <laughs> Her home is like Martha Stewart, cranked up to 11. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. She does Easter decorations, Thanksgiving, Victoria Day weekend, like, you name it. She has decorations for it. Some, some, sort, of Star Trek, some sort of Star Trek holiday as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, of course. Star Wars All of Life the Day. Did you she has get a Martha seven and... appetizers. Um, They're all healthy. So, kale. so I think that's going to be our scene. Why is Doug invited? Just because 
You think that he has pull at the government? Of course. Blair has to be part of all of the local persons. And she has to have a good reputation with everyone, of course. Don't be silly. <laughs> uh, okay. And of course, her good friend Clifford. Uh, Clifton? I mean... Clifton. I know you're not related to him. You can at least remember <laughs> his name. Uh, I, I'm going to show up at the door. Uh, and I think Clifton should be... I'll show up at the door just as Clifton arrives at the door, too. And I'll yeah. be... I'll say, oh, I'm so glad I have a friend here. I hate these people so much. Oh, so you probably caught, like, caught him at his door and he just couldn't refuse, so you <laughs> kind of dragged him over. <laughs> well, no, I... I well... Uh, we could. I could have dragged you with me. I was. I was thinking you got invited separately, and I run into you at the door, to uh, to Blair's house. Mm. You're all right with that? Or would you, I have to drag you to the party? <laughs> or to the dinner? No. No, you probably go. That's okay. It. Um. So yeah, I clap a hand on your shoulder, Clifton, and I'm like, I'm so glad that I've got a friend here. These people are gonna. That Mr. That Bishop, he's gonna he's gonna be the end of me with his possums. I mean, that has the guy has no respect for nature. Yeah, Bishop's a bit intense. Um... Yeah, yeah. I don't know why he's got to wear that coat, that that Letterman jacket all the time. Oh. It's, uh, if, if it's like. If... <laughs> What was that, Ryan? If it still fits in this condition, you know, why I guess not? so. Waste not, want not, right? But I don't know. I I was head of AV club, but you don't see me wearing my t-shirt all the time. Can you still wear it? That's besides the point. <laughs> As I reach and I knock on the door to the to the party. The... Almost immediately, Blair opens the door with a tray. My hand's still in the air. Yeah. Oh, hello, welcome. Oh, it's lovely that you both showed up together. Interesting, interesting. And she'll walk out. Please, come on in. I have appetizers. This is kale chips with a salmon puree. And this one here is a gluten-free crouton with a uh, kind of pate. Cows made them. Out of, the know, side of my so mouth, the out of the side of my mouth, I just say to Clifton, we can eat around the kale. <laughs> um, Blair, I thank you so much for, uh, I brought you a, 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 a house, a gift. I know you like decorating, so I brought you something from my collection. Oh, no. Uh, and I, <laughs> oh, oh, true fear. I reach, I, 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 I from behind my back, I pull out this uh, like nicely little decorated box, and I pull the lid off, and there is a um, there is a mouse um, that with a, like a little model table, and it's pouring a tea for another another mouse. Oh, it's like Redwall. It's like mm -hmm. Redwall if a human came and murdered them and then posed them, uh, <laughs> <laughs> posed them in their dead bodies. Yeah. <laughs> Just Blair like will take it with her free hand and keep it far away from the food. What a delightful piece of art! I uh, thought, I thought I would go with something a little more, you know, classy. Um, you know, if you carry that tree, if you want to look at the. Um, you know, I think I'll set this down in the other room. No, 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 no! And I, gra I, I grab the tray from you and I hand it, <laughs> oh. I hand it over to Clifton. And then I pull you, I sort of like pull you aside. I saw my coat on and everything and I'm pointing out. <laughs> so uh, th these these little fellows there from my basement, I just, I caught them in, in a trap. Uh, I had to sort of straighten their backs out a little bit. That was, it's complicated, um, you know. Um... Charles darling, Charles darling, I guess this is where I have caught some of them, please, if you could get Wine, lots of wine. You know, I'll put this in the place of honor on the mantelpiece. I think it'll go delightfully with our autumn theme. Excellent. I, uh, at autumn theme, there is another knock at the door. Oh, gosh. Um, she opens the door. 
Bishop and oh. his uh, husband Louise are both there, and Bishop, instead of wearing the varsity Letterman jacket, is actually wearing a uh, a very nice like it's a white tucked in shirt. But he and his husband are wearing complimentary uh, suit jackets with tailcoats, and they are iridescent. They are bright, and they have like complimentary colors. So instead of a, uh, it's like one's blue and the other one's like a uh, like a deep pink. So I like to think that Blair and Luis are very good friends, and he doesn't understand why you hate her so much. <laughs> we, like, go to brunch. <laughs> oh, even worse. <laughs> we do brunch and drink mimosas and, like, gossip about people about town. <laughs> and uh, underneath, in a uh, paper bag, of course, and now unwrapping it, um, Bishop pulls out a nice big bottle of red wine and says, this is from Luis's last trip. He actually went to Spain and went to visit the vineyards. That's also where he got these wonderful outfits for us. And Luis was like, I also made some red lettuce wraps for you. And passes that off for the dinner. Oh, you know, I always love it when you come by. Hello, Bishop. Hello, Mrs. Royal. I think, um, uh, I think Clifton and I have, <laughs> we're suddenly out on the outside of this stare down. <laughs> Um, and uh, I would probably find where, where to hang my coat. And I think at this point, as we're kind of looking, snooping around the house, I think this might be a good time for us to see the bat left over the, uh, over the fireplace. Because you, mm -hmm. you said you were going to put it on the mantle or something, so I'm going to check, you know, that you actually, the mouse is actually there. So there's a, um, there's the main living room, which is this big grand affair that's like two stories high and like seasonal decorations. And then there's the den that's like the office for my husband. That's where the bat lift is on the wall. And the little mouse has been placed. Or like, there's a spot where you think that the mouse could be placed. She's, she's still holding it. So. Right, right, okay. What if she won the bat lift off of, like, in a bet with either Bishop or Clifton? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's God. Why she, and that's why yeah. she's so proud of it. <laughs> What if in the same way Blair and Louise are best friends? I'm best what if I'm best friends with your husband? Yes. <laughs> and we have like an ongoing thing where we trade off weirder and weirder objects to each other. And the bat left is the last the most recent edition. Uh, oh god. We need, we need to figure out um, whether this is a how this goes for me in the scene. Oh. And so I can figure out uh I can figure out how the rest of the stuff weaves in if you guys want to pick out whether it goes good or bad for me. I feel like this I'll, goes I well start. for Doug. I was going to say, actually, here's a question. What if Bishop gets really, like, sees the little uh, uh, mouse uh, taxidermy figure you did? The diorama. Gets, diorama, thank you. And it's like, oh, that is absolutely amazing. And it's looking at Blair, like, did did Charles get this? Is this from Charles? Is this what he's oh. going to give me this time? No, no. Doug made this. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, go hmm. ahead. Take a look. Here, I'll take the tray yeah. of food back from you, Clifton, please. I'll trade you the bottle of wine, take the thing, go. The Mart, it looks absolutely stunning. The... Wow. I'd probably poke my head out of the office when I realized people were talking about something that mattered <laughs> to me. And I uh, would come out and I'd be excited, and then I would see uh, that it was Bishop that was holding on to it, and I, my shoulders would kind of sink. So, do we think that's positive uh, or negative for uh, our good pal dog? Positive. Well, if it goes positive. if it goes positively, I can spend okay. it probably. And somebody's appreciating his work. Yeah. 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 This person who disrespects nature loves the work. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I sidle over to you, Bishop, and I say, "I made that." Is this is absolutely well done. I love this. So you had to you had to like fix the spine to set them up that way, right? Yeah, the like the trap, the traps aren't yeah. very. I feel a little bad about the traps. Mm -hmm. I uh, I'm working on better solutions. They really do a number on you know. But I I, I you know uh, I I'm I'm you were the last person I would expect to actually think that this was interesting. Louise knows I um, love figu like little figurines and just very well 
made uh, uh, per like personal projects, the first gift Louise gave me was actually a hand stitched doll that uh, actually reminded me of the professor we both had in college. I don't like dolls. Dolls are creepy. I couldn't have a bunch of dolls around my house. <sighs> Too weird. That, yeah. Too weird, those dolls. You know, that's fair. I pointed that out to him, but it's give, still give so me, sweet. Give me stuffed creatures any day. Yeah, that is absolutely amazing. Uh, I've also been... You know what? I, I think I figured out how I can make this really good for me. Mm -hmm. uh, now that you're talking about how amazing it is and you're talking about things, I, dra I, I pull you aside and I say, I think... I think I've got a solution to your possum problem. You see him shut a light up on that? So, but we're going to have to work together. Of course, I'd be more than happy to. Actually, they've been digging through the red leaf a lot, so I know they really like the red leaf lettuce. The red leaf we brought tonight was actually the last scraps we had. Oh. Did you find it in their poop? Yeah, actually, you were right. I can't tell. I wouldn't be able to tell without the texture. You were absolutely right. Trust the system, right? Trust the system. And he like okay. holds his hand out for a fist bump. You don't get one. There's a. <laughs> it's the awkward like hand over hand over the. Yeah. Fist. <laughs> okay. Okay, we're gonna catch him. We're gonna catch him. And I'm going to make you the finest victory trophy you've ever received. I would love that. Louise overhears the conversation and goes, oh, God. <laughs> All right. Blair just hands him wine. <laughs> I, I think that's good enough for me. I'll end, yeah. I'll end the scene there. Oh, God. After that, quick question. Do Blair and Louise just, like, both drink wine, and when no one else is around, do they just start talking uh, mad, like, hot goss about everyone in the oh. party? Why do you think Blair is so interested in everyone? She wants to gossip about everyone. She wants to know everything. She brought Clifton and Doug here to see the drama unfold so she can be like, well, it was at my party that they really had that blow up. Hundred <laughs> percent. <100%. laughs> she is that person. Yes. Cole, if you want, we can you can carry on from from the Yeah, the I think I'm gonna continue the party. Yeah. I think we're continuing on from the scene for sure. And um I think uh, I think what I want to actually, yeah, I do want to carry on the scene, but does anyone have an idea of what they want to what they think Bishop wants in the scene and what they want to see happen next? Um, there might be some contention I, I, about We need to get the bat lift into Clifton's hand. I know okay. that that's, yeah. that's important to me somewhere in mm -hmm. here. I don't know Ooh. I don't know how but we, we need to get that the, the Klingon blade into mm -hmm. Clifton's hand. Um, so, Jacinta, would you want to play Charles and then Clifton, you and I could be talking to Charles and pointing out, like, all the weird stuff and uh, Clifton, I don't know whether Bishop dragged you into this, whether, like, one of us or, like, Doug was like, go, go hang out with him for a bit. I gotta think about something for a second. And uh, you get pulled into the den where the bath left is. How do you, how would you like to approach that? Uh, oh, Ryan, if you're talking, you're muted. Yeah, I think he know what a bat look is. He just is really surprised that you have one on display, but he wouldn't know how to go about getting one himself. So <laughs> he's really like digging it. Yeah. I suspect you and Charles through rugby have become pals uh, at least just on the sidelines watching the kids play mm -hmm. so like he probably sees his wife going a little bit like oh god what's happening and just kind of ushers you into the into the den to be like just ignore them just ignore them she's fine she's fine we'll just hang out in here where it's quiet he does this a lot <laughs> so then you see it on the on the mantelpiece and yeah, I think that's where we'll kind of cue into the scene with uh, Bishop coming in with Clifton and Charles. And so, Charles, how do you like the new uh, new piece we sent you? Um, I was told by a few friends this is something really exciting to get, and I figured it'd be a... you wanted something that offered presence whenever uh, you were working in the study. 
well, the new webcam calls that people are doing nowadays, you want to make sure you had something showing off in the background. Uh, you know, uh, Blair was infuriated when she saw it in the mail. She saw it and she was like, are you kidding? And I, I knew the perfect place was above that damn fireplace that she asked me to put up mm -hmm. in this room last year and those renovations that we did. Oh, oh yeah. man. Every time I walk by it, it makes me happy. Oh, I like it. That warms my heart and soul. Oh. Mm hmm. If it just gets a little closer to it, like, man, where'd you get it? Like, well, you a fan? Yeah, I've, I've seen it once or twice. Like, mm hmm. I, you know, Charles was kind enough to tell me a little bit about the show. And we, whenever, whenever Blair's out of town for a little while, we have a guy's night, you know, we all hang out in the den, we all hang out, watch a couple shows together, binge watch, and my last trip, I happened to see someone who was handcrafting that, uh, what you call it? Uh, uh, a batlet. A batlet. Right? Bell. Batlet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Beautiful. I asked that person how soon could they have that finished and how much I could pay them to uh, ship that to my good friend here. And it was a done deal after that. You have a card? Anything like that? Mm -hmm. I like to... I I, yeah. Charles will pull it off the wall because there's a signature on the back. Here, it's uh, the artist's name is tagged on the back. You can mm -hmm. swing it around a bit. Try not to hit the trim. Blair will be a little upset. <laughs> it's okay to hit the trim. Fine, it's not going to drop their value. And Charles looks at you, Bishop. He says, you don't have to live in a house with her. Let me have this one. <laughs> you know, that's fair. Uh, you know, I will say this. I do know she make. whenever she talks about you, she is extra excited. And I just saw I got a positive card. Uh, she yeah, always positive, seems... Positive. Yeah. She always seems so excited whenever she gets to talk about you and the house and how well the yard's doing. But also you, mostly you. I mean, you know, we've been married for 15 years and every day is an adventure with that woman. Mm -hmm. We've had our yep. troubles. And she's very she's a energetic. Bit of a character. She's. That's, that's a, a word. word. That's a that's word. A word. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Bishop, you're okay. <laughs> you too, Charles. Oh, goodness. Fist bump. <laughs> it's actually like proper. You hear like the yeah. right, like little clack. We got like the the wiggle going, <laughs> like <laughs> lock it and explode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so Clifton, like, what did you what do you think about the neighborhood so far? How do you like everything? I think I realized I didn't have a goal for this scene either. I think it was just more to talk shit about Blair. <laughs> mm. I mean, fair. Yeah. But I think it's also I think the end goal is to build another connection with Clifton at least. It's it's been it's been one thing after another. A lot of interesting people in town in the neighborhood. Alton it has that energy. It's why I wanted to be as much into the community as I can and it's why I care so much, you know? If if you ever have any questions about anything, feel free to Drop on by. I live three, four houses up the road. I have no to see problem. this yard every day. No problem. I'll swing by if yeah. I need anything. Oh, yeah. How's the rugby season going? Uh, it's it's looking like a winning season. Mm -hmm. They're putting in the work. Oh, yeah. Between you and me, if Blair's hopping out, they're they're pretty much in, honestly. I think it's going to be the one nice thing he will ever say about Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Charles cheers as you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Her plans typically go well. Yeah. She just, you know, she's she needs to just settle down. She needs to stop getting into people's personal space. <laughs> Clifton just shrugs at <laughs> Uh, 
So Clifton, yeah. t- tell us a little bit more about what you do. And if we want to, we can kind of start sliding off from there. Into black. Yeah. What does Clifton do? Mm-hmm. I like that to be a secret. <laughs> Nobody knows what Clifton does. <laughs> He is the um, the Chandler Bing of the group. No one knows what he does. It's something about numbers. Oh. They just know he goes to work and he comes back. Mm-hmm. Money comes in sometimes. In, in third season, Clifton gets his own spinoff where we learn about all the things that he does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Turns out he it's was a homeowner all along. So, so the happy ending to your scene, Bishop, is that you made friends with people? Is that what? Uh... Yeah, basically, Clifton is on the side. And I think, uh, oh, God. I think the happy ending to that scene is Bishop actually says something nice out loud about Blair to show he's not that contemptible. And if this was like a movie, people would be writing in and writing off Bishop as like, no, see, he is the good guy of the story. He's definitely not one of the other villains. Right. <laughs> Stick right. around, find out more. This is his one redeeming scene. Yep. Mm-hmm. Got it. His one chance. <laughs> Two magnificent self destruction. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, All right. Jacinta, you're up. So while the gentlemen are doing their thing in the kitchen uh, or in the in the den, um, Blair is definitely in the kitchen with Louis. Louise. 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 Yeah. Um, and I assume Doug has kind of floated in just, you know, because yeah, he didn't fit in with the boy, with the, the well, dudes. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't get invited, so. Yeah, so yeah. you just, and Blair's too friendly, or too personable, not friendly, personable, right. um, to really, like, not invite you. It's her party, after all. Um, so you're all in the kitchen, kind of, like, chatting over wine, and Blair's trying to get for gossip on, but you're there, and so she's kind of like... I'm maybe not in the conversation, but I'm in the background talking to someone who I've cornered about yeah. about uh, taxidermy practices of some mm-hmm. kind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Blair will um, pop up. Well, you know, Doug, I heard the most interesting thing from Clifton the other day. I actually jogged by the two of you while you were chatting. You having trouble? Trouble? I, uh, what did Clifton say about me? Just that the two of you had had some interesting news. He he didn't tell me. Darling wants to be a little more private, but I know well, we're darling friends. I was hoping to have a chance to talk to him about how we would tell folks. Um, but yeah, no, I, I mean, we've got some pretty uh, pretty exciting news. Tell unless you want to make the announcement at dinner. Roast is almost ready. Give us another two minutes. Just need to crisp up the kale wrap. I think it would be very important. I, I, this is something that I think Clifton and I should, should do together. Of course. Well, set the timer. Everyone get to the dining room. Oh, absolutely he is. I think at one point you see um, I think Blair would see this. You would see the uh news mentioned and you would just see Louise just like drink the wine but do the eyes of <laughs> <laughs> the gossip is coming. Yeah. <laughs> now Doug, we have two minutes until the roast is done. Is there anything you want to talk to me before you make the announcement? We're all good friends here, I promise. We are. I think this is just some like really life changing news that I don't think it would be fair to Clifton if I if I told you without without him around. Well, it might be a good idea to you know workshop how to say it. Um, mm-hmm. what, uh, I, I think we we'll need an out. I think we need an outcome card for this because I, I you're trying to get the gossip out of me. So. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. Ryan, do I leave them in suspense and make them think that you and I are in some kind of re- weird relationship, or do I <laughs> spill the beans and and give them the gossip they want? I mean, I know what I want. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Clifton is going to have to be the uh, deciding factor here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
is Blair convincing enough of her darling friendship with uh, with Doug that he'd spill the beans and risk his relationship with Clifton? <laughs> I think you're muted again there, Ryan. I think Doug would be extremely proud of the news, but I don't know if he would give up the information. Like, like he'd probably do something distracting, I guess. <laughs> Just sure. try to change the subject. Yeah. yeah, okay. Just pull out some pigeon innards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot I brought snacks. <laughs> Uh, so you're thinking a negative. You're thinking a negative ending for yeah, for negative. Yeah. Oh gosh. Yeah. Uh. You know, um, Blair. There's a little saying we have at work. I have. I, there. I've got. Uh, there's a time and a place for when when information. There's a system for when you should be. Uh. There's a system for for how information uh, is delivered to people. And at work, we say, trust the system. You know, I, Blair, usually, darling, I am on your side in these things, but he's, I've heard Bishop say this as well. And yeah, we just got to trust. We have to trust Mr. Custard here that he's going to tell us what it is at the right time. We shouldn't pressure him. Luis, uh, Blair shoots Luis the most just scathing look that only they understand. You know what we have enough time to do in two minutes. Mm -hmm. And I go and I lift the tea towel that you have thrown over top of my tea mice Mm -hmm. and hit and hit it in a corner in the kitchen. And I say (laughs) we got plenty of time to get it up up on that mantelpiece. Well of course I know Bishop would love to see this and I think uh Louise helps you out the entire time. And turns back over at Blair and just gives a shrug of, sorry, dear. She just drinks the rest of her wine and at the exact two-minute timer pulls the roast out of the oven, and it is perfect. Mm-hmm. Good thing that wasn't a negative outcome. What <laughs> that if that just got... <laughs> oh, my I wasn't going to ruin the roast. <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> I would, would never, never do that to a roast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Clifton, Ryan, you're up. I'd say following up, Clifton probably shows up like at the tail end of that conversation. Like he handed the bat back to back to Charles mm-hmm. and went to check on how things were going, <laughs> and. <laughs> I I might suggest that we move to like dinner because Blair's pulled it out and she yeah. just shouts like dinner. <laughs> she just wants to know. Yeah, everybody can just dinner come to dinner. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. Do you let Do you let Doug sit beside you? He might relent this time. <laughs> just... <laughs> All right. There are name cards on the table. And Clifton and Doug are next to each other. Oh, hand. Oh, I'd be like, we, hey, pal, we gotta use the it's name. There's name tags. We have to do it. You know how she'll get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <I> man. <laughs> <You're just about. laughs> this is bigger than us now because if we don't do the name, follow the name tags, we're we're in deep doo doo. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> So, so Clifton, I think, I think I want to let our friends know our news. This is like the perfect time, don't you think? I think at this point, um, Clifton looks at you is like, I didn't think we were keeping it a secret. Have you been telling people about that, that I'm your third? That we're third cousins. I didn't tell anybody, but I didn't think we were keeping it. You were from people. Oh, no. I mean, no, I mean, but I just, maybe there's people here who don't know. I, I mean, don't you think that everyone, don't you think everyone would think it was really cool? Mm. This, it really makes this place like a family neighborhood. Yep. Yeah. But I don't see the 
need to keep it a secret. I mean, me neither. That's why I, I'm thinking that we tell everybody while we're here. I mean, you could have told them already. He's <laughs> 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 like just downplaying the the big reveal. <laughs> At this point, Blair will take her wine glass and clink, 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 clink. Everyone, I think our dear friends have some news they'd like to share with everyone. Please, Doug, listen, if you uh, may. I kind of told them that we had some good news, some cool news. I say that everyone turns their head towards Doug and uh, and Clifton. <laughs> uh, There's a cocked eyebrow from at least three different faces. So. I do like the awkward with you, Clifton. Should I? Do you want to? Should I, should I do the? Should I tell him or should you, do you want to? You tell him. Like you just. <laughs> You're just trying to eat your meal as quickly as possible so you can just leave. Yeah. <laughs> you see, you assume, okay. he assumed at least half the people in this room already knew. Like he assumed you went around and told everybody. <laughs> right. I wouldn't do that now without talking to my my new best friend slash. Basic, basically brother. Uh, so I get up and I say, yes, uh, Clifton and I have some news. Uh, I, I, you know, I work, uh, I work for the government and uh, I was going through some papers one day and I discovered a really interesting fact. I had no idea, but I, I have, I have family in the neighborhood. Clifton is my third cousin twice removed. Wow. I know. Congratulations. It was a bit of a shocker. Um, Mm -hmm. But really cool, right? Yeah. Or just drinks her wine. (laughs) I think uh, Louise and um, Bishop both look at each other and go, that is wonderful news to hear. Wait. Uh, Clifton, it, would this be a positive outcome if like people receive this positively, or like if no one made a big deal about it? Yeah, what's the what's it, the positive what's outcome the worst for thing it? about this situation? And what is the best yeah, thing? About I, it? I think I think with Clifton, it was just like, oh, this is like the, the entire thing of us being relatives. Just like, oh, this is new information that I have, so it's not a huge thing for him. Mm-hmm. So he's kind of embarrassed that people are making a big deal of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's, it's just like, like kind of negative, but like a neutral negative. Yeah, it's, I call it a negative. The negative outcome is that everyone talks about it too much and makes it too much of a big deal. Yeah, because something. he's trying to play it casual and everybody's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being third cousins means nothing. Yeah. So I think uh, Bishop like kind of talks up a little bit and says, you know, it's very important to have family living around you. And again, that helps keep the community close with each other. If we're all, uh, if we're all tied to each other, whether through bonds or through, through. A... Exactly. Yeah. This is a good and important thing. It, and it matters. hundred percent matters. <laughs> uh, Clifton, congratulations. Doug is a great man to know. He, he is wonderful to be friends with. And I just, congratulations. This is absolutely amazing. He starts clapping and Louise just also finishes. Now, I don't want, I don't want any of you to treat us any differently. Maybe, maybe, you know, we're, you'll see us chatting or whatever. Don't get jealous. You can still, you're all family to me still. Doug, I hope that means we'll see you on the, uh, on the rugby pitch. Cheering on the boys. Mm-hmm. As you- I have no idea how that <laughs> game works. actually chuckles like. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do want that mascot, I'll make I'll make you a mascot. Uh, have you been getting my Doug, emails? Doug, just um. Okay. Well, I think. They don't. I I could make the head. It wouldn't smell as bad as you. It's fine. You go an extra mile, Doug. It's it's too much. <laughs> you know what? Thank you. You know, you you always look out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Feels good to let everybody so know. Good. And then I uh, sit down again. That was keep eating. 
That was really strong of you, Doug. And Clifton, congratulations on finding new family in the neighborhood. And, God. And it's just... <laughs> just I, just, <laughs> I just see Clifton just, like, getting mashed potatoes and just slowly, and sh- like, trying to just get eat through the entire meal yeah. and go... I would the- probably say to whoever was sitting beside me, uh, his son isn't in taxidermy. Just to make it worse. There's a look from Louise going, wait, what? (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Uh, How do you feel about that scene, Ryan? You think it's good? Mm -hmm. Or do you have any last words? I think it's in in the scene drinking his wine. (laughs) Right. Waiting, watching the clock. There were three bottles of wine. Blair pulls him more wine. Just like fills it to the brim. Yeah. At the oh, beginning of the party, there was three bottles of wine. Now there is now two and a half bottles of wine are gone. <laughs> oh Lord. All right. I think for my scene, my last scene, uh, we have to do the possum stakeout. Oh God. I mean <sighs> it's the only thing that makes sense. Oh man. <laughs> this is gonna uh-huh. be good. So I show up at your house in the middle of the night. Uh, I tell you yeah. that I'm coming. But, uh, you know, this is sometime after the party, obviously. And we, uh, I have these two um, cages, like cage mm-hmm. traps or whatever. And then I brought this big bag. What was it? You said red lettuce? Yeah, red lettuce. Right. So I've got two, like, big bags of red lettuce to, to fill mm-hmm. up. And I, I say, are you ready to do this? So... I need to describe what Bishop's looks like. He okay. has one pair of night vision goggles on his head and an extra pair for you, a tactical vest with like snacks and different pieces of bait. Uh, he has two fresh mugs of coffee. Uh, they both have landscapes on them of places of like, one is of Mulan, the other is of uh, London. Right. And they're both steaming, and he like hands you a cup and says, good to be doing work with you. And uh, the, uh, he like, fl- after he passes you the mug, he just flips down the goggles, and you hear a... Is there like a tag still hanging on? Yes. Of Did you go and buy all of this yeah. stuff like, <laughs> earlier today? Mm-hmm. Just before the dinner party. Wow. Um, well, you're certainly better equipped than me, a government employee. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. usually I just wait until the trap does its thing, but... Well, you, you, you said we were staking out, and, you know, I figured it would be good to be equipped and prepared. In fact, I went and got these, and he has, he has two uh, poles, both with, like, giant nets on them. They aren't meant to catch possums, no. but they look like they're. He thinks they're meant to catch possums. You really, um, you really got help from the store clerks, huh, huh uh, Bishop? They were so helpful. They were, especially after I talked to their manager, they were especially helpful. <laughs> huh. Well, I'm glad you're taking this seriously. Thank you. I'm gonna give these possums a good home, so, and then also get them out of your proverbial hair Mm -hmm. so you tell me what we need to do um just grab one of the cages dump a bunch of that disgusting red lettuce into it uh i mean second only to kale i guess no kale is terrible (laughs) yeah bishop is the opposite he loves red leaf lettuce who doesn't blair loves kale right okay blair is the only one who likes kale yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's important it's our character's okay. backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah, they're just the the traps that close behind the possum when they go mm-hmm. into it. Yeah. I have no idea what what else could happen in this scene, but that's I guess now we're down in the grass. Mm-hmm. Uh, your over long <laughs> grass, which in this situation is good. Mm-hmm. Um, an extra half inch is going to give us the cover we need, and. 
or down with the night vision goggles on trying and and trying to drink coffee while being like <laughs> down you're like, like it's the weird one because like you're laying on the ground you're trying to like sip the cup of coffee yeah, you're kind of like, like lapping it up yeah it's not, <laughs> it's not good uh so have you been to either of these places uh once yes we uh uh, Louise and I, we took our honeymoon in Milan, and he does a lot of work in London. He he has to go there pretty often, but, you know, got to enjoy some wonderful things, see the nice sights, meet, meet with the locals, work with the locals for a little while. I guess these mugs really give you lots of, uh, lots of opportunities to talk about this stuff, huh? Actually, less than you'd think. I don't really have that many people come over and visit. It's weird. Well. Hmm. As long as you've got possums to catch, I guess I'll come around. That's true. Thank you again for coming out and doing this, you know. But I, and I, I'm sorry. I'm making you take personal time out of your life to take care of something work-related. It's just, you know how important it's been for me to get to capture these possums and, in your words, relocate them. I... I'm I'm doing this uh, for the possums. Can I throw out a negative card scene real quick? Because I I have a bad idea. <laughs> sure. I, if you if you want this to go bad uh, bad for me, I think it's as good a time as any. Just let I... me do a quick count. We have one, two, three, four, five, six negative cards out, and one. Five, oh, six and six. Uh, so there's Perfect. two of each left. Perfect. Um, would you consider it a negative card if Bishop ended up hitting not only his power but actually took out the power for the entire neighborhood? Uh, with the nets that he bought to capture the uh, possums. I don't really care about the power going out. Do we catch the possums? He'd probably uh, escape, right? A negative, a negative. Is, the biggest negative for Doug is not getting the possums. Ah, uh, okay. So, if the power going out is also part of that, I'm absolutely fine with it. I think that's yeah. that you get overzealous. Yeah. You'd be so, like, Doug, Doug was about to get him, and then, but the yeah. power went out. Bishop, <laughs> yeah. Bishop just Bishop's does like a huge roar cry and go, oh, yeah. I got you now. And, uh, let's do this. Let's, oh, let's, God. Let's ruin, let's ruin the neighborhood with our possum yeah. hunt. Uh, okay, um, we, I managed to get you to stop talking about all the places you've been mm -hmm. uh, for oh, maybe we get five minutes of silence or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little bit of movement. We catch possum, the glint of possum eye in, in the light uh, in our uh, night vision goggles. Mm -hmm. And I go, shh, 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 shh. they're here. Have you ever seen the... Uh... The way someone like a animal photographer will like sneak up to get a photo of an animal perched on like a log or something, how they like get down on all fours and just kind of creep up. Yeah. Bishop starts doing that. <laughs> just uh, on all okay. fours, just. I, the trap is going to, they just need to go into the trap. What are you doing? I'm, I'm just getting ready. I'm just getting ready. Just it's, not catching them with your bare hands. No, I'm going to catch them with the net. Like, the net's, like, hasn't moved yet, but it's just barely being lifted up. I start, even though I could just as easily get up and, and walk, I start doing the shimmy along the ground like you to try and catch up with you. I'm like, mm -hmm. what the hell are you doing? Listen, <laughs> listen, this is going to this is gonna work out. Trust me, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. That is a net for, like, scooping frogs out of a, out of a swamp. That is not going to be strong. Do you know the muscles on these things? The possum jump. I think at this point, the possum, like, realizes we're stalking it, starts to move, and Bishop just gives the loudest yell, lifts up the arm with the net, and immediately catches the generator. No. Oh. <laughs> Do we see Bishop's skeleton for a second as he uh, gets a little... <laughs> I get good. I get good. Oh God! <laughs> yes. And then the whole the whole neighborhood goes to dark, and, and it starts from like Bishop's house, and yeah. we get like various scenes of like we have a, a Clifton's uh, Clifton's kid like watching a uh, TV show on the computer late at night when definitely not supposed to, 
a but taxidermy the, a taxidermy at home YouTube video. Yeah. yeah. And the power immediately cuts. Um, there is, for some reason, someone's fireplace goes out, which is really weird. <laughs> and, I have an electric fireplace at my house. That's a thing. <laughs> uh, oh, God. We have yeah. the uh, the spotlights for like the mansion. Those immediately just short out and go. And it just spreads out through the entire community. And then the lit rugby pitch uh, in mm -hmm. the middle of a game. It just yeah. flickers and, and goes in. Sure. And you just hear a collective, oh, stories. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> on that, uh, on that, uh, that's probably a good place to end our scene. Yeah, I will say this just to follow up. The possum gets so freaked out, it runs into the cage. Oh. Because you wanted to catch a possum. Well, it, it, it ended badly for me, so I assume yeah. the possum got away, but. Oh, I thought we were still doing it good. How about the possum somehow gets into my car? There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how or why, but it's a, there's a live possum in the car with me now, uh, or will be when I when I get into my mm -hmm. car. Okay, scene. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Cole. It's Bishop's last last scene of the game. Oh God. As far as all right, I guess it's your last scene to set up. It may not be Bishop's very last scene. Yeah, I think Louise has run out. And a fine embroidered, embroidered uh, robe, their initial stitch on it, runs out, and we see Bishop on the ground, uh, just like saying to themselves, "Catch possum! Catch, catch, catch the possum! I'm going to catch the possum!" And uh, Louise just like shakes them a little bit, and you're just like sta uh, you're standing over it with the uh, looking over, and God. I think uh, uh, the next shot we get is Bishop heading to the emergency room, and there is just a flurry of news reporters once he comes out of the ER, and he's like bandaged up a little bit. The doctors, through the science of cinema magic, he's perfectly fine, hmm. but I think we have just a flurry of reporters all standing out. Uh, in front of the ER, looking at him, and there's just a headline that scrolls across the bottom of the screen and says, "Head of local small town HOA, cur uh, currently under investigation for knocking out power for an entire neighborhood and ruining the rugby game." Uh, uh, I would love if y'all played like different reporters just firing questions at Bishop. Uh, sir, what, sir, what's it like completely ruining rugby for a bunch of small children? I, there was a game tonight. I, I, I didn't. What do you mean? What happened? Uh, Sir, does this have anything to do with your uh, hatred of the local coach, Mrs. Royal Blair Royal, head of the uh, Triton College team? Miss Miss Royal, Mrs. Royal, and I have a very professional relationship, and we would never stoop so low as to hate, just denounce each other in such a way, and. And yes, we have our differences, but we would never, sir, ever. Sir, did you catch the butterfly? <laughs> I, it was a possum. We, we, I would never try to do anything to harm her character. Sir, were you on drugs? I would. Cameras yeah, go off like everyone <laughs> leans in a lot closer. <laughs> oh, I. Who wants? How does this go out? <laughs> this seems bad for, seems oh, bad yeah. for Bishop. <laughs> yes. I think if Bishop was answering a different question when he gets asked, "Are you, were you on drugs, sir? He says yes to the answer of the previous question, accidentally <laughs> saying yes to the answer of being on drugs. Yeah. And just boom, whole bunch of flashes of cameras and lights, new headlines scrolls across. H head of HOA uh, confirms being on drug, knocking out power, destroying the neighborhood, and ruining the, the rugby game. <laughs> Washed up property kid, value. kid hater hunts possum on PCP or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Pro property value in small town neighborhoods plummet as this man admits to the crime. People are currently calling for uh, resignation of Bishop of uh, Bishop Prophet 
And Bishop's just like, no, 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 listen, listen. Uh, I did I did not do anything wrong. It was an accident. I was trying to catch a possum that was destroying the neighborhood. It was a menace. It was attacking everything. And I, I, I'm not on drugs. I've never done drugs. I think it cuts to a scene and they're interviewing someone else and he says, I've hunted a lot of possums in my life and I've never once done it with a net. He was definitely on the drugs. <laughs> Something like that. And there's like a fade of Blair watching the news with like a glass of scotch leg. <laughs> <laughs> and scene. <laughs> Self-destruction. Yeah, ridiculous. Ridiculous. I think you also kind of covered someone stumbles in at just the wrong moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I think we're covered on our tilts. Oh. You definitely ruined a very simple by the books mm -hmm. possum hunt. So, um, all right, Blair. Oh, so um, Luis, of course, calls Blair when this awful atrocity happens. And being a good neighbor, Blair comes over with a beautiful kale salad, obviously. Um, and a, uh, you know, just with such concern for Mr. Prophet, the husband of her dear friend, um, she knocks on the door. Louise answers the door <laughs> and says, oh, hi, Blair. How are you? I brought you a salad. Good. I heard what happened to Blair, darling. Are you all right? Uh, Bishop is not doing well he uh he's been holed up in the the study for quite some time he's oh he's been writing he never he never does anything good when he writes mm. would you like me to talk to him i know we've had our differences in the past but i think maybe i can do a little bit of good mm -hmm. oh you know I think, do we think this is positive or negative? You only have Yeah, positive. so you definitely can Oh, it's in, the so. redemption arc. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went ahead and threw you a positive. So, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think that would be really good. He, he needs a friend. I tried everything I could, but he just needs a friend. Yeah, you and, take the kale. Of course, of course. And, oh, this is delightful. Thank you. Um, Raisins are homemade. Ooh. Of course. Uh, the kale's a pot. Uh, and <laughs> so you come into the study. The study has just an arrangement of books all about real estate. Um, some of them talk about the history of the uh, neighborhood, uh, who, you know, what kind of people have lived here, what the, uh, what the uh, uh, property value is currently. There's a whole bunch of charts. There is a goal board with uh, step one, head of HOA, step with a check mark by it, step two, da 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 da. And you just see, you see Bishop. Oh, just he is in his varsity jacket and pajama pants, staring at a fireplace. And there is a soft arm, uh, soft jazz record playing in the corner. And this man just looks sad. His entire backside is completely dark to you as soon as you come in. He doesn't even register that the door has opened. Blair, uh, on the uh, door frame. Uh, Hello, I'm... Bishop, darling. Hello, Bl Mrs. Royal. Just Blair. Hello, Blair. He gave us a bit of a fright, you know. Louise called me in hysterics. Yeah. Yeah. He was right, too. I was... Oh, God, my husband married a clown. I'm the laughing stock of the entire neighborhood. I mean, wouldn't go that far. Ah, but you did make a bit of an oops. 
shall we say? Oh. <sighs> a little so bit of an oops. Fun, like, huh? What's up? Like on a couch or something, or just like standing at the Standing, fire? just like staring. Like thousand yard stare a little bit. And hearing a voice he's like, Pulling together like the bare minimum energies to like chat. Mm -hmm. oh. I've I've made a mistake. I've been working on resignation letters. I've been writing apology letters to the whole neighborhood. Uh, just to the kids. I oh. Bishop, don't be silly. You've done a wonderful job as the head of an HOA. I mean, listen, I give you grief, but your grass, my goodness, I haven't seen a green like that since I played golf last year in Florida. Beautiful. He just kind of shrugs and goes, like, as a acknowledgement, but not really positive or negative. Uh, and he just walks away, goes right back to where the laptop is. He just kind of stares at it and goes, I just don't know what to do. There comes uh, over and sits on the desk and shuts the laptop and says, you know, Bishop, the first time we met on the rugby pitch, you said something very interesting to me about the father thinking that you weren't quite cut out for such a sport. And I think I told you that although you couldn't beat me, mm -hmm. which obviously... Obviously. Obviously. Technically um, still never did. Beat your team, but well, never you. Well, you know. I still thought you were the toughest player on that team. And they never would have won without you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you shouldn't let something so silly as a couple of possums and electricity blow out take you down. Yeah, I just... I, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm struggling to make it right, you know? Struggling to make it right. Do you? Do you still have connections to your old rugby co coach? Of course, darling. I have coffee with him every week. What if? Hmm. Would you be willing to help me out? Blair turns a little figurine that mm -hmm. Charles gave you on the desk, so it's like perpendicular, like rectangular, the rectangle is perpendicular. Mm -hmm. You know, I picked this one out myself. I've always loved your little competition. I can you make know, a call. That would be absolutely lovely, Blair. Thank you. Be my pleasure. Mm -hmm. And scene. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> It's very sweet. Wow, two terrible people actually being kind to each other. They slipped into some other game. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> something has to go wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> something has to go wrong. Well, no, the last card's pos. Well, no. Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll see how the math shakes out here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, Ryan Clifton gets a, a positive final scene because that's the only card that's left. We all get exactly two negative and two positive results. Um, so, so what is the last thing that happens, uh, or what, in our, in our story anyway, that happens to, uh, to Clifton? I think you're muted again there, bud. Keep doing that. Um, I think Clifford, in, a, in an attempt to, I guess, make friends with Doug invites him to turn his son's training to try to find some common ground with him. Okay. Um. And he just, like, they were going out, and then he just decided to invite Doug. All right. Uh, this to is his, to his boy's delight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is this, I guess this is after whatever happens to me in the car with the possum? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, we could skip ahead and I bring 
and now no longer a live possum over to your house. <laughs> is this a positive ending for you? Positive ending to the scene? What if this is how it like, increases your bond with your kid? Because your kid's like, what if your kid just doesn't want to play rugby anymore? And you guys are able to connect on that. It, it would be something if he learned something cool about Doug that he didn't know before because mm. they went out and had this day together. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will reprise my role as a totally teenager. Voice oh, is too good. All right. Where are we going? This is, seems like more like a positive for Doug, <laughs> but I will. <laughs> uh, I like this last scene where we are planning uh, like a little surprise for your kid. <laughs> It works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. So I, I'm coming over and I've got this like kind of smelly looking box. Um, and I am I just have a big smile on my face. And I I'm I'm really excited you invite me over to hang out, but I am doubly excited you had told me to bring the possum. Yeah, I thought you know we at least get to know each other a little better. Rather than just as neighbors. Well, we're not just neighbors. I guess so. Uh, okay, well, I mean, I brought tools. Yeah, I heard this about... what you want. This is what you want to do with our day? Yeah, just relaxing, chilling. You know how it is. Emptying out a possum? But I wanted to ask, <laughs> did you have anything to do with the power going out the other night? You know, uh, you know, between we're family now. I I was there when it happened, but I I I don't know. You you should probably hear it from him. Okay. He. Just between you and me, Bishop's not a good possum hunter. I hate saying that about somebody. Hey. <laughs> and he passes you a drink if you drink. Yeah, a beer. I'm just a normal guy who wrestled uh, a live possum to death in the back of his car. Just a normal guy with his house full of stuffed, <laughs> stuffed animals. <laughs> I, I drink a beer with the boys just like everybody else. Um. <laughs> I this is the strange. In all my fiasco, this is you and me this drinking is... a beer with a possum, a dead possum in a box between <laughs> us is probably the weirdest goddamn scene I've ever been in. This is, this is the family bonding moment though that people write yeah. about in the reviews, you know? Yeah. <laughs> This game is dark. very wholesome and I appreciate it. Yeah, it really ended wholesomely. Uh <laughs> That's what you think till the very end. Sure, yeah. I mean, if you're good with it, Ryan, maybe it just ends with us clinking glasses uh, over mm-hmm. over the over the possum. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And you tell me how you how you defeated the possum. Yeah. There's like this yeah. cool song that plays as I'm like uh, <laughs> mim- miming the mo- the possum fight. It's a song by like the Nationals or the Mountain Goats. Yeah, something really like <laughs> something folksy and, and nice. Um, okay, I guess that is the last scene of our our fiasco. Uh, a couple things happen now. Um, I'm gonna flip these cards back over and hand them back to the before you flip them over, uh, a Cole. Um, Starting with me and going in turn order, we each have the option of handing off um, one of our cards to somebody else. And then you just have to, you have to indicate a nice thing or a bad thing that you kind of do to, to push the person's fate along. If you hand over a, a positive card to somebody, if you hand a positive card over to somebody and then you have to explain what the positive thing is, vice versa with the negative, you don't have to hand any cards at all. Um, the do you have an X? Is there an extra card on the table, or did someone? I already think have so. It? Yeah, I think we should 
All right. Sure. That, but I can oh, wait. Yeah, it. that's that's one I just that was from the tilt. This one's okay. not. Give me that. Perfect. Um, so you don't have to hand a card over uh, if you don't want. Um, the, the general idea is, is the more even your negative and positive cards are, the worse your outcome is. Um, so having more of one color, even more of a negative color, negative one is is better. Um, your result is going to be a bit better. So uh, we did end our scenes wholesomely somewhat, but uh, you're going to see from the aftermath that the game is going to try and have even worse stuff happen to us. Mm -hmm. So I will remind you when you do see your aftermath card that it is a um, suggestion, not a rule. So um, I subjected both Clifton and Ryan to so much ridiculousness that I uh, feel legally obligated uh, to give uh, him a positive, one of my positive cards. And I think it's me getting uh, a couple of tickets to a um, taxidermy for beginners class for him and him and his son. Are you sure that's a positive? It's a positive from my perspective. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Bishop, do you want to give away something? Keep your cards? What would you like to do? I, yeah. I think I'm going to give a positive to Blair because she called in the favor for the coach. And basically, how Bishop spins it is as a way of apologizing to the rugby team, this. Uh, award-winning college coach who has actually been has played at like an international level has offered to run a summer camp for free for all the rug for the uh, two rugby teams who had their game canceled and he plays up that like it's because of, uh, Mrs. Royal's wonderful offer and connections and just really plays up how much work she put into making sure this happened and he is pushing that forward more and more all right. Blair. Mm. Sweet Blair. <laughs> Sweet Blair. You know, I part of me wants to give a positive to Bishop because she feels like we've gotten such a good like relationship going. <laughs> but that's not how Blair do. <laughs> so instead, the next gift after the Klingon Batleth is going to be a possum that has been put into some kind of rugby position of her winning. It's the female possum versus the male possum, and she is winning against the male possum, mm -hmm. and that is the gift that Charles gives to you. <laughs> oh, and he... <laughs> there is a twinge of the eye the entire time he has to look at that and he leaves it right in front of his study so he can remind himself to be humble. <laughs> Love it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ryan. Uh, I think I think I'm going to give a negative to Blair in that our children go to the championship game and we lose because of her kid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Wow. laughs> yes. Yes. Food poisoning because the kale wasn't washed well enough. Oh, no. <laughs> Alrighty. Pass that that dagger of a negative over to uh, over to Blair's pile there, Ryan. <laughs> okay. So now, uh, everyone can flip over their cards. Um, you're ignoring any text that's on them, but you're going to tally up your numbers. Uh, sorry, tallying them up is not the exact words that I would uh, use. You will add up the, the two colors, and then you will um, subtract the, higher no the lower number from the higher number. Uh, for example, I have a red seven, 
and a blue two. So the two subtracts from the seven and leaves me with a red five. I have a blue five. I. Oh, go for it. I have a blue 10. <laughs> Gosh. I think we might have given you a slightly happy ending. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, Clifton deserves the best. Yeah. Paul, you got a red 7? Yeah, red 7. OK. Uh, everyone's numbers are different, right? We got a blue 5 and a red 5? E yes. OK. Um, so. Uh, in turn order, turn order, we're going to grab our aftermath card, the aftermath card with our number on it. Our, our there, so there's a there's blue cards and red cards in there. Uh, if you hover over the um, if you hover over the deck, you can see you can just choose it right out of it. Uh, so I'm going to grab. I'll go first and I'll grab mine, and then you get basically you read the card out and then you give your um, your epilogue scene. Uh, you know, a paragraph, a, a couple of sentences or something about uh, what what happens to, to, to tie the bow on your character's story. So I have a red five right here. I'll drag that out on thing. All right, desperate. Uh, <laughs> well, I've been whipped like a rented mule for starters, and I will remember this episode for all my diminished days. The lesson has been as profound as it has been painful. Nothing is ever going to be good again. You can see how this maybe doesn't shake out exactly uh, to our story. Um, uh, but I will say, hmm. I think a new rivalry forms, but not between me and uh, Cliff, but me and Cliff's kid. So. <laughs> Uh, uh, Doug is well known and 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 well appreciated in the local uh, taxidermy competitions, uh, and has won most of them. Uh, he has a lot of gold, uh, gold and silver medals. Um, but in giving a gift, giving this gift to uh, the very competitive Cliff and and his very competitive son of the gift of taxidermy. Um, he's created a monster. And he uh, shows up at this the, the competition. Maybe this is a couple of years later. Cliff and him have become good friends. And the kid has this magnificent display. It's three raccoons in a trench coat. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and the top one is wearing a fedora, and they've got like uh, a plastic revolver. It's it's basically these three raccoons are dressed like Humphrey Bogart, and is like the best thing I, I've ever seen, and it just upsets me to my core. That's it. I, it's all I could think of as being the worst mm -hmm. thing that could happen to, to me. Oh. Oh, the pupil, pupil has surpassed the master and way too quickly. Yeah, yes. Uh, exactly. All right, uh, Cole, you can go ahead and pull out uh, your, seven red red. Se your red seven. Yeah. Pathetic. This should not go well for me, and I'm going to suffer for it. Everyone's going to know about my malfeasance, my foolishness, my lack of common sense and decency. I have a strong feeling I'm also going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I was worried this was going to end too well for Bishop. So we get like a flurry of uh, of scenes. We have uh, we have people who start leaving signs in front of Bishop's house. They are saying, you know, resign, leave the neighborhood. You are not family, stuff like that. And it's actually no, I'm going to backtrack on that one. But they're basically like. It's been known Bishop has messed up. In fact, Louis has gotten a call that uh, he is getting pressured from his job, and Bishop and Louis both go into a discussion, and they decide it would be better if we separated, and so they separate. Three days after that discussion, we get another scene of uh, Bishop talking to reporters, trying to appeal. During the discussion, cops come up, and... Uh, 
they read out a pamphlet, a, a uh, paper to Bishop and take him away. And in the scene, we see ex AHOA head arrested for uh, property destruction. And he is acquitted, but he is ordered to commit to community service. And he has to basically work for the local government to, one, file all the paperwork and to assist in uh, people's, assist in basically in pr uh, city planning as a volunteer and establishing new, basically helping to establish uh, homes for people who are trying to move in and also continually do cleanup for local parks. Uh, he does not go back to his home. He actually moves out and has a, uh, not a bad apartment, just a one bedroom apartment um, that is much further away than he wanted to. And Louise and Bishop don't talk that much anymore. Wow. Question, <laughs> does he keep the possum figurine he in the does, divorce? We get one scene of Bishop pointing at the possum figurine as he's moving out. And we cut back to the apartment. He is wearing a jumper and it is just covered in grass stains. He like pulls it off, ties it around his waist, has a white t-shirt underneath, goes into the fridge, opens a little can of coffee and goes to sit in, at a chair. And instead of watching a TV, he just stares at the possum figurine. <laughs> Who knew no. possums could cause a man to fall so far? <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. Me. Goodness me. Ooh, all right. <laughs> I had a plus five I just drag, and it should do the thing for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why am I zero? You want me to drag it out for you? I mean, might have grabbed on. You're a blue five? Yeah. I was blue five, but okay, I got a zero. Go. Oh, oh, so, oh, you just drew a random one off the top. That's why. Oh, there's a way to go. Uh, there's a way ah. to go in. I grabbed it for you. Thank you. Appalling. I don't want to seem bitter now that I know what it's like to be utterly crushed, crack casually brought low, forced to eat my own words, and stand mute and powerless to my enemies. They gloat, and I'm helpless, so that's nice. That's a confusing kind of positive, but all right. Um, <laughs> so Blair sees the drama with, um, with Bishop and she's there to comfort Louise who is crushed by this turn of events. And she is made the head of the HOA. She has her cover on Holmes Weekly, um, and every time she looks at that stupid fat lift across the fireplace, her heart breaks. And sometimes she'll be downtown, sorry, in the city center, um, and pass by the park where Blair is doing his community service. And she'll see him while she's carrying her non-fat, sugar-free, whatever, latte and kale sandwich, because of course. Um, and she'll think, what if? <laughs> but she knows that if she did, her world would collapse. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. We're now for the true hero of the story. Yeah, let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. You said you had a blue 10? Yeah. So if you hover over, uh, oh, you got it. Perfect. <laughs> uh, adequate. My dignity is intact and I feel good about myself. There's a good chance that some of the things I wanted, I wanted to have fallen into my lap and I didn't tend to enjoy them and stay out of prison. <laughs> so what is our sweet final scene for uh, for Clifton? I think, I think his ideal ending 
it's just that everything goes back to normal. Like even with Doug, he's just become a regular part of their daily lives. So it's not as much of a hassle. Like they he invites him out to like family get togethers and stuff like that to introduce him. And he just gets closer to his son through this new path that he's pursuing. All the while, I'm miserable in the background because he's your son is a better. Yeah. <laughs> he's doing so good. What an, what an awful <laughs> character I am. Yeah. Doug got exactly what he wanted and didn't <laughs> yeah. that he didn't want it. Yeah. <laughs> Classic oh. fiasco character. Could I could I add a little stinger from the uh, kid? That's like, what if the kid like when they win the comp the competition with their like three possum tr- and a trench coat idea? They it was said, raccoons. I said raccoons. I said possums, but yeah, yeah, raccoons. The three raccoons in the trench coat. He uh, he comes up and says, "I would like to dedicate this to the person who encouraged me in this crap the most. The the uh, person who's helped guide me." in all these kinds of trouble and encourage this creativity. And I imagine dogs like getting all prim and proper and then like, going, okay, at least I'm getting some recognition out of this. And then he points to his dad and says, my dad, Clifton Smith. Thank you so much. He's <laughs> 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 just completely oblivious. He just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze frame oh. right there. Yeah. Oh, all right. Another perfect fiasco. Oh, uh, there you go. Um, our new players. What did you think, Brian and Jacinta? It was delightful. It's fun. I don't know why you were talking about awfulness. That was lovely. Oh no, it everything was. is. Everything's fine. <laughs> everything went great. Everything went yeah. according to what I planned for. <laughs> uh, I think we'll go in reverse order and everyone can reintroduce themselves. And maybe if you've got your favorite moment from the game, you can mention that. So, uh, uh, Ryan, you can go ahead first there. Oh, okay. I'm Ryan, uh, Sphinx Roll on Twitch and Sphinx Roll on Twitter. I'm actually going to be in a game tomorrow um, uh, for Emerald City Gaming Guild. They are doing their Western Marches. Um, but it's a one-shot promotion for the Western Marches campaign, the Persistent World, 24-7 D&D. Very um, cool. I've always wanted to play in a, in a West Marches game. That's neat. It's, pretty, it's been pretty fun. Um, game is tomorrow at 11 Pacific um, on Emerald City GMG, I believe. Um, I think my favorite... My favorite moment in the game was the possum hunt. <laughs> Just getting overprepared to hunt some possums. Yeah. 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 And then we're absolutely ruining it. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, Ryan. Uh, how, how about you, Justin? Uh, yeah. So you can find me on mostly on Instagram at Farakaya Artwork. I do art. Um, I'm a writer here in Ottawa. Um, I think my favorite moment was that wholesome togetherness for Blair and Bishop when they finally found their commonality and Blair could swoop in and be like, I can help you. (laughs) That was so good. (laughs) You know, it was so heartwarming and like, (laughs) they just, they Mm -hmm. had togetherness at the end, really, you know. It was strangely nice. It was so nice. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I am Ice Cold Brew. Uh, he they. I'm Ice Cold Brew on Twitter and Instagram. I'm also appearing time to time on my partner's Twitch stream at Hilarity. That's H O L L A R I T Y. And I think the projects I want to shout the most is keep an eye on the Roll Plus Bond Twitter account where we. Uh, in the coming months, we'll be preparing to do our anniversary stream where we'll be raising funds. And go check out their project, Flight of Magic, where they play Fall of Magic, and uh, you get this wonderful about 10-episode series with music made by one of the players themselves. 
highly recommend checking out Flight of Magic. And my favorite moment in the game, I think it's still the city hall where the old lady's like, this man bought three houses and all my friends mysteriously died. Cause there's like a, <laughs> wait, there's a horror element here and we walk away. <laughs> yeah. I'll just drop that. Yeah. <laughs> The Haunted no. Mansion spin-off yeah. is like, yeah, it's down the line. Turns out it was like a whole connected universe of this. Yeah, yeah, Halloween, Halloween episode mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, my name is Jordan. I'm at Made of Cartoons. I don't have any regular gaming streams right now, but um, next week uh, we have a bunch of holiday-themed games uh, coming up on the channel. Um, oh, first I'll say my favorite moment is I think the the sharing of the beer over the dead possum at the end. You know, it's just that's about as that is about as strange as this game has ever gotten. So uh, I definitely enjoyed that. Um, yes, so next week we've got three holiday themed ish games. Um, on Tuesday uh, is Hanukkah Goblins, the new game that just came out, uh, where everyone is playing. Um, Hanukkah goblins, I guess. I mean, I don't think I need to say much more than that because that should be enough to get you to go and watch that show. Um, and then on Wednesday, I'm running 10 candles for some folks. So it's going to be a spooky holiday uh, game. Um, I've named the episode If Only in My Dreams. So we'll see uh, We'll see how that game goes. And then um, on Friday, I think it's Kate. Uh Community member Kate is running to serve her wintry hunger, which if any game could be more sound more of a downer than 10 Candles, it's to serve her wintry hunger. So I'm very excited to see what that's about. Um, I have been, it has been confirmed that it is Kate. Uh, I'm very curious about that game. I don't know what it is, but it's all wintry themed stuff next week. So please tune into this channel. Uh, support Jess. She's great. She lets mm-hmm. us come on, on the air and do silly things um, for laughs. And uh and then, of course, uh, Roll20 for giving us an, an awesome place to play all the games. So um, thank you, Ryan, Jacinta, and Cole. It was really fun playing with you. It was so much fun. Thank you for having yeah. me. <laughs> I'm happy to int- always happy to introduce new people to Fiasco. And, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Have a good, uh, have a good weekend. Thank you.